everybody! Welcome to the last Beast Cast before Halloween! And by Halloween, I, I mean the uh, election. This is episode 284th? Wow. Wow. Or uh, it is October 29th or October 30th if, if it's Friday with Halloween falling on a Saturday this year. What a great day to have, what a great year to have a Halloween on a Saturday where everybody can go out and trick or treat all day uh, and spend all that time outside uh, putting your hands in mixed bowls of candy uh, and, and really just enjoying it. No, Alex, you're shaking your head no, no. No, people, no I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to do the ghostly head shake from like every horror Ooh. movie in the late nineties. The... Oh yeah, that's yeah. Watch out. Oh, I'm scary. Ooh. Man. Well, Alex, um, what? do you like Halloween? No, I said, oh man, because they, <sighs> well, Alex, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lean back for a second. I'm going to get real with you here. Mm -hmm. This morning, yeah, please do. a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Now, Twitch is yeah. running Twitch, Twitch running all these ads during the, like these mineral ad tests and uh, to switch over to a different streaming thing. We're just streaming. Are they scary yeah, ads? A little scary, a little scary. Um, it was it was signed out. It came in signed out a giant bomb, which uh, was a little weird. Um, usually it's, they oh. signed in, and now I did that. Now uh, 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 Viacom CBS just signed me out of uh, my show notes. So I'm going to uh, and we got Backlar's low mic. Um, it's just it's the, the great <laughs> logging off. <laughs> the internet ghosts. Spooky ghost wire. Abby Russell. Tokyo coming That's me. soon. Oh, look at you. You're making game jokes. Abby, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. I Should we do this now? I've been watching a lot of Ratchet, that Nurse Ratchet show. And I've been enjoying Ratchet. it. And I just Googled it. And everyone's like, this show sucks. <laughs> so, so now well, you now you have to be like look, uh this show sucks right uh, yeah, i uh, like it i think it's fun I, mean, I think how you, dare you, you go into it knowing like hey it's fun i also didn't see one floor of the cuckoo's nest so like i don't know <laughs> yeah because here's the thing about one flew over the cuckoo's nest it's not really a horror movie and True. wait is ratchet a horror movie it's, it's horror. a horror show it's a, yeah it's a oh, horror okay. show i saw a the promo thing, for it and was like do, uh, do we need this is it a horror show? It's like a thriller esque. I think it's but... basically like American horror ratchet like thing. It's right mm. from what I've I never got watched any of them, but it feels less horror. It, it does Ryan, feel campy, goofy, but uh, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Murphy, yeah. Murphy. Yeah, so he, and he did the AHS stuff, right? Well, um, he's producing it. I don't know what his creative role is on it, but I do remember reading an interview about that show uh, before it came out with whoever it was that was in charge of like launching that show. And they were like, yeah, we were looking for uh, popular characters that had not been exploited uh, in other media, in, in other uh, forms. And I was like, well, Nurse Ratchet hasn't been exploited for anything <laughs> else yet. So what if we used her? And this that is, is the like genesis of art. A lot of internet info you got to know in order to hate a thing, which is not where I'm at with it. I wouldn't mm. go in blind. Um, I don't hate it. I just don't want to watch it. I don't know anything about it. So, Abby, I'm just going to take the internet's opinion no. of it and say uh, you're probably wrong. I guess you're just wrong on this one. I guess it really is just a terrible show. I mm -hmm. I I hate when that happens when I'm like I'm really liking the show and then you're like you go talk to some other people and you're like <laughs> oh no everybody hates that show and be like oh uh, <laughs> yeah well I guess uh. I watched some of that Space Force show, the, the one with um. Oh yeah, how was, was that? that? I I thought it was good. And then, yeah, and I was like, oh, this was fun and goofy. And then I was talking to my brother, and he's like, oh, I'm glad you like it because everybody seems to hate it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess I, I, I guess I just have, have, have uh, amazing like, taste. The most extreme opinions when sometimes mm. I'm like, I don't know, it's like a goofy, campy, fun show that like looks real cool. I don't think it's neat. It's like a show, slum light spoilers about like queer women and they're both like middle-aged which like you never see in anything wait it's ratchet like, is about that yeah oh wow it's like a whole major like queer storyline huh and like there's you know problematic stuff with like killer queers and all that shit but you, anyway you i thought that was me, right like you can hear yes. me yes uh, barely yeah. you're so you're so extremely know, yeah jeff stacy was watching it right yes oh i was gonna name drop my wife uh <clears throat> noted television producer my mm. wife um likes it so you're you you know but good you gotta love See, just saying i think that know, the people critics online either. are boring and i think people have it out i don't know anything about ryan murphy but i think i it can't be fun it looks really good it's also just kind of weird but i i, I don't know i, I think, think it's ryan, fun ryan murphy's wild ryan murphy said he hates it right 
I think he's like, he's, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like, I, it. yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I have to do this. It sucks. His, his own show. He's yeah. like, why do I? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? The only this? thing I, he, I think he was quoted saying like, the only thing I hate more than the show I made is people who stream video games online. Yeah, and their opinions. For his words, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't know he was behind that nine one one show. Wait, Reno? No, no, oh. no. The one on Fox. The that one is you, basically the one a you've cop never show, seen. but yeah. <laughs> Backlar, Backlar, how you doing? Uh, this is um. I'm gonna say this at the top. We spent a lot of time trying to get your mic leveled out. So in the recording archive of this, the video, um, we all apologize, especially Backlar. Yeah, but you're just gonna take my, you know, stem in my. Not track for the in, video. Yeah, all right. I mean, I'll try and project a little bit. Okay. Is this good? No, you just have blown out no. when you do that. So just, just roll. We'll roll with it. We're all listen more intently. Yeah. Go for it. It just sucks so much. You know, I, know. I can't even get a word in edgewise because of this low level mic situation. <laughs> I'm totally getting fucked here, man. <laughs> yeah. What well, did he say something again? Uh, I don't know. How's you it going? Guess what there? I say? Read my lips. Um, it's going all right. I, okay. uh, you know, I've just. I've just been, I need to chill out, man. I chill out, like, relax. You know, like I, I need to find chill out. a place of Zen. You know, I just really do. I just, everything. There's a know, lot going on just, right now. There's a lot going on right now. I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't find like five minutes where I can just, you know, I got to start meditating, I think, or something, man. I got to, I got to figure Sounds out, I got to get my shit together. So um, I got a, um, other than that, I'm, I'm okay. I got a. Uh, I was gonna. I was looking into getting an exercise bike because I now have uh, about two ish hours in the morning when the kids are doing the virtual stuff. Well, maybe around three. Uh, but everything is kind. And since the desks and the the school has kind of figured it out, I'm mostly there as a teacher's aide now, not like a mm -hmm. not on top of them. So I only have to go run and get printouts and paper and. You know, when something's not working or do that, I don't have to sit next to them. So now I've I found myself with like I have to be tethered near their room, so I have to be very local, but I kind of can do something. So I was like, oh, I'll put an exercise bike in the bedroom, and that way I, I can like exercise and not just turn into this pile of garbage uh, that I have been turning into. I, ever, you guys ever see Weird Science? Probably doesn't hold up. No. Don't look. Mm -hmm. Don't look up anything about it. No, it there's, doesn't. there's Chet who looks like a pile of shit at the end, and I just feel like that. I mean, he literally is a pile of shit at the end because um, she goes, "You're a pile of shit, Chet," uh, and then turns him into a pile of shit. Anyway, um, I feel like that. And then my wife was like, "No, like, hey, we're not. You're not getting a giant bike that you're putting in the bedroom. Our bedroom is pretty small, and you have a bicycle." Just go, go like, and I'm like, well, I have to stay by the kids, yeah. but like, um, so I found, uh, I, somebody, I was talking to, whining to this about, to a friend and was like, what do I do? And like, oh, get a trainer, uh, which is like, basically you take the back wheel or you keep, keep the back wheel on your bike and just put it on like a stand and ride your bike in the house. So I'm very excited about that. Does it have resistance? Yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of different ones. They, they can be from, uh, affordable to extraordinarily expensive. But, um, Let me tell you about I... the ladder. <laughs> Do you have one? <laughs> yeah, we have a Peloton. Oh, so yeah, that's right. That's an Jan exercise Jan bike. Has one too. I think uh, Jan loves his. I fully recommend. I I fully support you getting an exercise bike. I think that seems so fun. Also, I have like friends who have them, and when I could go over to their house, I'd go over to their house and just like ride their like bike because <laughs> we are all watching football or whatever. It was so fun. I just want to tell you something. I hate it. Okay. <gasps> Wait, you hate Why? the Peloton? Oh, I hate it. I Wait, hate sell it to so me much. for like a hundred bucks. I'll give you. No, a, I'll give you a hundred dollars. My wife loves it, it and oh. she and she was the driving force for the purchase. She absolutely loves it, and uh, I, you know, it it fucked my hips up. I, oh. I, I think like, oh. you know, and it was funny because I was I before we got it. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pause you for a second here. Can you not say the p words? Just in case they want to send us one, and just let's <laughs> just say oh. you got you got a bike the and be like, I'll say yeah. P -ton? yeah. Listen. Gamers are not Peloton <laughs> target demographic. They Let should be. be. Wait, this, they that. should be. Oh, I see. Those, uh, those exercise people, instructors, they're just exercise streamers. That's right. They're just. No, they're I just know streaming. that. I'm not saying they shouldn't be. I'm just saying that right now their target demographic is more the executives who sell video games, not uh, as much the core gamer. I think that if we can sell gamer chairs, we can sell Pelotons. Well, I want to be the what first about? Peloton. People, yeah, people have emailed us being like, I got a gamer chair because you guys talked about it. Oh, that's well, not I mean, on purpose. We didn't oh, want that. Yeah. Sure, I mean, I mean, but I'm saying you know. us selling Pelotons 
maybe won't be on purpose. No, but Abby, you're missing. A, you're, I think I think you're missing the main point here, which is uh, yeah. uh, I listen, I, listen I, you at home, you buy whatever you want. But uh, I want them to send me. I want the company to yeah. send me one, so I could write it during this podcast and show everybody that it is. You no, know, that's listen, exactly get you, the point. I understand. Will, I'm saying that all yeah. of us could have that. Mm-hmm. You will. Get, you will gain no uh, beneficial, uh, uh, you know, uh, ec- uh, cardio uh, output from like doing it during a, a podcast. Like you to get what mm. you want to get out of riding one of those things. And I do like once or twice a week. I'll do a half hour ride and, and look. By the end of it, I am beat up. Like okay. I have, I am sweating. I am because dr- I need to replace what I would get out of playing hockey. For me. sure, I don't. Ha- and like, you know, it's it's driving me crazy that I can't let out that energy. And the Peloton mm-hmm. doesn't really let me do that. I just sweat and perspire a lot I, and get my heart rate up. It's not letting me like do the things I get to do when I play ice hockey. Regardless of that, you like it. It is a thing. Like you can't just you know, casually like read a book and, and get, get on the bike. Like if you follow the resistance, you know, mm-hmm. ups and downs, like you will get beat up even in like, I'm um, great. Well, I'm ready to get beat up. That's what I'm, that's a, uh, Hey, listen to me, everybody out there. So anyway, oh, no. don't, don't send oh, me, no. a, don't send me a bike. Oh, no. I thought it wasn't just me. I got nervous. We, we can't, then he got beat up. We can't. It's going to be hard for him to edit later. Oh, you're, oh, no. you're, back. you're back. You're back. You're back. I just got a Peloton. <laughs> well, oh, sweet. <laughs> uh the the matrix the matrix shifted now <laughs> like, okay. wow i'm so anyway i was talking about this peloton they sent me and uh and this is not gonna make and sense in the, this is not gonna make sense in the audio version uh no. i my video froze i guess um yeah a- anyway what are, what are we doing back did you find the gain on the back <laughs> i think so <laughs> This is the best podcast, folks. Uh, that I mentioned, <laughs> yeah. number one is podcast cool I, in the universe. Yeah, is it cool if I try and do it during the show. Well, you already sound blown out now, so you might as well. But you're if you uh, if you mess up your local recording, I will be uh, a little upset nah. with you. Nah, that's not gonna. Ha- how's that gonna happen? Well, well happen? If, you, if you unplug the USB device, or if it starts blowing oh. out, or you change the levels where I have to go through it and manually muck around with your level don't worry i put a limiter and a compressor on everything anyway what do you got tweezers over there anyway yeah, I got tweezers. uh i'm looking forward to getting a little exercise uh but it, before that um i'm exercising my right to play video games like you like that thank you uh like transformers battlegrounds like oh i remember this like transformers battlegrounds now mm-hmm Transformers yes. Battlegrounds is a is a game. One hundred one hundred Transformers are dropped onto something. an island. I did something. You do sound a little better. For real? Yeah. Yeah. You sound good. Uh, are you louder? It. Yeah, no. you are louder. I'm definitely louder. You are. You sound good. Okay, okay, let's just let's roll with it. Did you turn the gain up on the mic? Well, so somebody sent me a YouTube video that says how to enable. Um, uh, a presence boost and that's what i did okay i did presence boost all right it's good thing you did all your internet research well, let this, me talk about this it. little <laughs> this little line is a little is curved now as opposed to straight uh, oh okay i mean it, it's it's, I it's not sound any different to me it, maybe it's a roll off <laughs> wow you're shaking the thing um yeah. anyway you you're maybe still a little low but when you got excited you were louder but now that you're okay. mellow, now that you're mellowed back out i think you're lower Transformers Battlegrounds uh, is a uh, tactical turn-based shooter um, that takes place in the Transformers universe. I think specifically the Transformers Cyberverse, which is one of the uh, new continuities they're doing. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Cyberverse. I like some of the designs. I don't love the voice work. I don't like what they've done to some of the characters. As somebody is a... um, I'm not like a Transformers diehard, but I do like the G1 continuity. I like the IDW stuff that they've done. This game is pretty basic in its, in its XCOM-like execution. Uh, you have a couple of Autobots. You Can you make them engage? Engage duh, or engage? Like, can you engage them? The thing like Autobots engage. I was making a oh, joke. Oh, <laughs> that you took very seriously. <laughs> Uh, uh, I believe the preferred <laughs> phrase is transform and roll out. I think I, I, so they say like Autobots engage. No, that's Picard. I think that's uh, yeah. yeah. That's Captain <laughs> that's, Picard. He says, says that engage. with the yeah. That's uh, hey, 
We'll, 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 we'll Another fine CBS really don't property. Say that? Autobots engage. <laughs> I, mean, that I don't know. Maybe in those Michael engaged. Bay movies they do. It's possible. Yeah, they definitely engage in in in, uh, in battle. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, at, once you engage in a battle, you have a couple of different options. You could uh, you have like basically three actions, but you can only uh, attack once, basically, and then your other two uh, actions have to be move, or you could just use all three of them for move. There's no dedicated transform button, which you know, listen, I get the design around that. It's not necessary, but it would be fun. Uh, they kind of just transform if you use all three moves, or sometimes they will transform if you have to go over a building if you're in a jet. I have not found it very engaging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> my, it took me a second. But I uh -huh. uh, my son, I brought him down to see if he would like it, and he was like, I like this. Uh, and he's watched the, the Transformers Cyberverse stuff, and he was like, oh, it's Teletran X in here. I was like, yeah, there he is. So he, he liked it. So maybe it's aimed at a, a younger set. Uh, and and not necessarily at you know an adult who collects a lot of toys on their shelf, but listen, just because I have toys doesn't mean I'm a child. Okay, just because no. just because I enjoy toys doesn't mean I can't enjoy a good game based on those toys. And they have made those before. They have made the the War for Cybertron stuff was was okay, and those games are good. But like you know, uh, it's this one I have not found to be great, and uh, or at least for me. And so we'll have uh, more on that coming up. Uh, another thing that I am working through, and I'm debating whether or not to finish. Though I might just because I think I'm pretty far through it, or maybe at least halfway at this point, is Amnesia Rebirth. And Abby, you've played mm. some of this, mm. and we recorded a quick look. Yeah. We didn't put it up yet. Uh, Amnesia Rebirth is uh, another sequel to Amnesia. The Dark Descent, I think, is the first one. Dark Descent was the yeah. first one. Machine, Machine for, for Pigs, pigs was and, the second and one. And then Justine and then was they, that kind like of... Justine. Yeah. That off kind of one. one. Uh, this yeah. takes place about 100 years uh, after The Dark Descent. You play uh, the main protagonist here is in a plane crash, and then she has Amnesia. Uh, and she's trying to figure out what happened to the rest of the team, though it uh, very early on appears that she was with the team as they kind of went through their trials and tribulations and somehow wound up back at the site of the crash uh, an undetermined period of time later. So she's retracing steps and remembering stuff as she's going. It's a pretty slow start. Um, mm. I was I was playing this... Um, like around eight o'clock at night, just kind of uh, jumping in, getting some work done, and started nodding off at this uh, game a little bit in a way that I was like, I don't think I should be nodding off during this uh, scary game. Uh, but it does pick up, and I think hopefully the quick look shows a little bit more of the monster stuff and the, kind of the creeps and scares. But you don't yeah. get you don't get a lot of that for hours, maybe. Yeah, I played for probably a couple hours. I feel like it never felt very scary or tense for me. Um, I think for me, there was like a, a certain simplicity to being plopped in like the original game like plopped into a mansion, you wake mm. up, you don't know anything and you're like sort of slowly discovering stuff. And there's just sort of this creeping, haunting feeling that you're being watched and chased. Whereas this one, it felt a little more like, well, I'm here to survive. And then you go into a cave and the cave I just didn't find as scary as the mansion. Yeah. Um, I also just, I don't know. It just, it didn't, I never found it scary um granted i didn't really get to where the monster was because it does take a while for like anything to start showing up that seemed to be any kind of danger to you but even then it would like start and the, the game would be like don't go into the dark she doesn't like it she gets scared but uh, you have these matches and you, the matches burn out so quickly oh my gosh she is so, so like, afraid of the dark she she boy she could cover her eyes and she'd start having a freak out she I is no she hates the dark fine whatever <laughs> but also you step into the dark half a second later she adjusts to it and you yeah. can like see perfectly well, fine yeah. so like a lot of the times i'm like i'll power through until the next like light section will <laughs> yeah. be fine and it it has been so far so yeah when so. you're when you're in darkness the game goes you know transitions to like a dark space but then uh, i think mechanically it works but also in in a narrative it, like her eyes are adjusting she kind of see this washed out sure. version of the world but yeah you're totally right like it, it, she starts her heartbeat start going things start coming in from the edge of the screen but you just run because there's a run and you can kind of run through those early encounters you can kind of just run to the next thing but you in order to make it not eventually she kind of freaks out a little too much and i think that's the end of that mm -hmm. but um 
you have these limited matches, and this is this is like just me. No, it's not. This is a this is my problem with it. You have these. You find matchbooks that always have two matches in it or three matches in it, and um, you light a match, and then you have to light a you light a freaking lantern or a torch or a candle. And she won't pick up the candle and just take it with her. She leaves everything. No, if she touches it again, it puts it the It puts light it out. out. It stuffs it out. <laughs> so, like, she'll light a, a candle on a table, and then she, uh, you can't pick it up and walk. It's like, leave no trace. Like, uh, take only matches, leave all the candles. Like, I don't really get it. It's like, uh, and that's really frustrating because that match, as soon as you light that match, you have, like, five seconds to light everything in a room. And you're just like, uh, okay, what else needs to be lit in this room? Because I don't know if I'm going to get everything. Uh, it's it's frustrating. That part to me, I find yeah. extremely frustrating. Um, is this is this like? Would you put this in the same category as like Doom Three flashlight design? Like, <laughs> why is it like this? Is there actually a good reason for it to be like this, or I, are you just trying to create artificial tension with it? I think it's worse. I think okay. it's worse. Oh I think it's I worse. I think it's like a yeah. It's a weird thing that's just like, hey, we all know she can't carry around a torch, okay? <laughs> we all know this, all right. Light a candle. We know she's not gonna pick it up. All she right, you guys know. We know. Look, her whole family was murdered by a candle. All right, she doesn't want to touch them. She can't handle it. Uh, it's just like she should have at least one scene where she goes to take a torch off a wall and like a trap opens or something and like spikes come out and she's like well i'm never doing that again you know just just something because the on top of that that you cannot touch a, a candle land literally lanterns that are there like lanterns that are holding and then she holds a lantern later on you got one as a, a, an inventory object but the other thing is you interact with every other piece of ephemera in the environment i get to turn over a bowl i'm gonna touch a book i'm gonna like you know throw bottles against the wall every the crates i'm moving around but no not this not this candle with a nice holder with a little finger hook on it can't walk around with that anyway um i uh I don't know. I don't know. I I I appreciate it. And I say this during a quick look. I'll say it again here. Um, and you'll hear it first, folks. Listen to Giant Beast Cast, number one podcast in the universe. Uh, if you're listening to this before the quick look goes up. The um I uh I appreciated what Dark Descent did, and I, I don't think I finished it. I think I only got a little bit past some of the water stuff, which was actually pretty spooky. But I think mm -hmm. so many games since that game came out have done that as well have done that level of atmosphere some have even uh done it better i mean soma was a hell of a game and i love soma yeah. Yeah. um and so i don't think that stuff is hitting f for me now in this especially now that i can nitpick this one apart uh and you know the, the turn the corner and there's a shadow of a monster stuff just isn't working for me as as well as maybe it did in the past uh i i think uh, i think we've been there a lot it's some it's some worn ground uh, so yeah, that's uh, Amnesia Rebirth. A quick look recorded. Uh, we'll probably get that up tomorrow morning. But up now, uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope, a game I am really yes. enjoying. Um, Me too. This is um, I always get this confused with Super Giant. A super massive, I believe, is the studio yes. behind this. Um, very different <laughs> development team. Mm -hmm. uh, they did Until Dawn. Uh, they did Man of Medan, which is also in the Dark Pictures anthology. Uh, this is kind of the second piece of this. And I hope they do a lot of these because I think they really, really do a great job of what they're going after here, which is this kind of campy horror. Uh, uh, the the cinematic quality to it, I just think they, they the team is doing such a great job with that stuff. Like the uh, editing between dialogue, the uh, cameras, the the cuts, the uh, atmosphere, so good. Uh, I, you can check out our quick look for that. Abby and I also recorded a little bit more uh, for Six Crazy Frights. We did the multiplayer option. So if you don't know what these games are, they're basically little kind of short story vignettes, kind of in the Alex. What would you call it? like those Tales from the Crypt? Uh, like a little it's horror. An anthology. It's an an it's yeah. an anthology series. Yeah, it, it's got that creep show, Tales from the Crypt vibe with like a, you even have the narrator come in and be like, ooh, you're going to, what are they going to get up to now? Uh, you know, very. But instead of a campy skeleton, it's a guy that kind of looks like Robert Patrick. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and I, I just think it is, uh, you know, and then throughout it, you kind of have this adventure game-ish quality of making choices and dialogue trees. And how is that going to affect what happens with this uh, cast of characters? And in like Man of Medan, and to a larger extent, uh, uh, until Dawn, I say larger because that game was a little more robust and longer. 
you know, characters will die, but you'll move on, and the, and the game shifts to kind of uh, account for that. Sometimes it gets it breaks at the seams. Sometimes it can't bear its own weight when you're choosing things, or you choose not to choose things. If you're like, I'm gonna stay quiet during this, and then a character will be like, Well, I disagree. <laughs> you know, and be like, <laughs> All right, well, that didn't quite work. But um, yeah. you know, sometimes it doesn't work quite that well. But I just I, it's like right up my alley. Whatever it's doing is like tuned in. It's simpatico with just what I want, and and the length of it is is usually good. If, if Man of Medan is any uh, indication, and I think I've looked at some uh, of the length of this, I think that it's right in that right in my wheelhouse. And also that multiplayer, uh, online multiplayer, not the local, because there is a pass and play where people just like pass to Abby and she'll control Andrew and pass to me. But the online one lets you simultaneously see different perspectives of the story. So when the team breaks up, you're actually Abby would be seeing a different view than i'm seeing so uh, i think that's really neat because when you if you want to when you come back together you can either you can talk or while you're apart if you're on discord or something you can talk about what you saw or you might not and man of medan did that to great to great effect and uh, i hope it does uh same here we'll see where the story goes but i kind of don't even care it's like it just nails yeah. that kind of campy vibe where it you know almost at some points you wish the, the costuming and the graphics look a little more like rubber that's the kind of vibe it has <laughs> um, yeah i totally agree like i i feel like it nails that like campy horror thing or even like maybe say like a ryan murphy show kind of camp that maybe people hate but i don't know i think it's fun um i think uh i don't know i think the game's really fun i think it scratches like that itch for me too where it's like i love making choices in game and feeling like oh i fucked up that choice and then i'm gonna like see the repercussions, <laughs> yeah. repercussions of it later yeah. on like i love that stuff um i also i think yeah i think it really nails the tone on like every level where you have these like fun archetype characters and they're sort of going through this like goofy story <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um but like we talked about this a little bit, I think on the quick look where I feel like with something like, like life is strange where you have the kind of like, I feel like the first life is strange sort of had that campy high school feel, but was almost too like saccharine at times. Mm. Whereas, and like some of the other ones I think get a little too, like they want you to have an emotional impact. Whereas I feel like the, uh, dark anthologies pictures and until dawn as well, never really feels like it's trying to like get you to cry. It, it knows what it is. And I think it knows it's fun the whole time, which I really appreciate. And I think that's why they like work so well to, for me, top to bottom and why I like want to see what's going to happen next, because it's just sort of like a goofy campy story in a way that I really enjoy. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, it, I, I think it knows it's genre and, and I, at least maybe I'm reading into that, but it, it is, it does the archetypes for the characters. This yeah. one, this one is like a class trip gone awry with like a kind of overbearing college professor, you know, a, a couple that's in the class, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe I don't know. The story remains to be seen. Uh, a mature student, <laughs> a mature just student, like, like a fifty-five year old, sixty year old woman, woman right. in the class. I love her. Who's Angela like a little like, 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 like favorite? Yeah, uh, she's great. So Angela, uh, and then you know, and then they you know play out all the tropes of like you know oh you know i'm gonna crawl into this dark tube <laughs> and it's like of course right. you are uh and let's see what happens so yeah and also the acting is quick. pretty good yes the quick acting question. is very good it looks very good yeah uh my one quick question here uh Please. did you happen to catch who the writers of this one were is it still graham resnick and larry fessenden I did I not catch it. I did not. Okay. Because uh, those are the guys that wrote Until Dawn, and they wrote the first Dark Pictures one. I was just curious if they were sticking with the same writers the whole way through. Because, you know, Larry is a he is a mainstay of horror cinema, and, and Graham Resnick has worked in horror, in horror film for a long time as well. So I'm just, I'm, I would love to know if they are still involved in this or not. I don't know. I, I think so far the writing seems, you know, it's hard to say it seems great because I feel like it feels it feels appropriate for what the genre I, what I think the genre should be doing. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and you know, you get to pick whether everyone's an abrasive asshole or, uh, going to be and condescending, but again, it's not perfect. You're not, you know, it does have that telltale telltale style funnel you back into certain points, no matter what choice you make. But the journey along that way is fun. I, I find fun. Yeah. Um, cool. yeah, I yeah. agree. And I think I at least find some of the imperfections to be part of the kind of like camp and sort of humor of it. Where like when it is because there were a few times, Vinny, where we were playing together and like your character, I was like, we were having a conversation with our characters and I would make a dialogue choice and then I just have to sit there with your character. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> but I like that like, thinking. <laughs> as a, yeah, exactly. But like, I feel like that, 
like works with the rest of the tone of it's, the game. It is. It totally. lives in the uncanny valley and just has set up home yeah. there and and just enjoys being there. It is. It is has no problem living there and uh, it's better for it. The dumb faces everybody makes that are just close enough to human uh, are, are very <laughs> yeah, good. Exactly. Um, so yeah, which, which I, one's I, the scariest? Like, because uh, I want to do it for uh halloween with stace which one I, should we play i, I feel like until dawn i didn't finish until dawn or the other one but i feel like this one is fun but i i feel like until dawn had like jump scares for me so Whereas far this one, this I one, really some of them, that one. yeah so far this one does not man of medan i think it really escalates at the end but uh, has mm -hmm. a pretty pretty slow uh wind up yeah. and i think until dawn kind of does but until dawn is uh, is a great game. I think Until Dawn is a fantastic yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. And right. I think Little it. Hope has uh, it's like very horror atmospheric. Like you know, you kind of wake up and you're like, oh my god, we can't get through this fog. What do we yeah. do? And it like has the tone of that. Whereas at least for the parts of Man of Medan I saw, I feel like it starts and you're like, we're hanging out on a boat. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I yes. can't wait to see how all these people die. <laughs> yeah. And Until Dawn is is like very traditional. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's all get away to my like uncle. I forget what it was. Like this uh, this cabin, cabin, cabin getaway. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's uh, I think Until Dawn. It's a lot longer. Uh, so where where this feels like uh, Tales from the Crypt episode, Until Dawn has that Cinemax quality of like, oh, this is a this is a ninety minute horror film. Uh, Got it. Uh, get monk bordello of blood. Yes. Um, and uh, so that that quick looks up now, and you can see more of that at Six Crazy Frights, which will go up uh, a little later. And then uh, I jumped back into Satisfactory after a bunch of updates, and that's the kind of base building. I should, oh, I should also mention uh, the um, – sorry, I didn't mention this, but if you're interested in the Dark Pictures Little Hope stuff, I think that game's $30 as well. It's it's not 60 yeah. which is good to know. And I think they sell it as a pack with Man of Medan for maybe 50 but don't quote me on that, but you might want to look into it. Um, yeah. Sorry, Satisfactory. I, I had stopped playing that because in one of the updates they made you uh, – and, and Satisfact the heads will know what I'm talking about out here. Uh, they made you um, get – run water to your power plants which meant i had to go and redo all of my power situation to run plumbing and water pumps and i basically had no power in my base anymore except for biomass which you know is kind of a problem because i had gotten off of biomass but I, it was something i kept putting off and putting off and putting off finally got back into it and in a big way uh, and was able to spend a few hours one of those nights where it's like it's four in the morning i have to be up in like three hours um, running the pipe. And then at that point I was like, well, I should figure out how to do oil at this point. Uh, I should dig for oil. And, uh, that's where I'm at. So I'm saying this because I think satisfactory is still a lot of fun, but I'm also saying this because we are starting to plan some extra life stuff. And if you see a block of extra life, that's just me for four hours playing satisfactory, trying to run oil, do not be surprised. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll, we are still planning. We're still trying to figure that stuff out, but, um, it might be a thing where maybe I'll invite some people into the game to come help me uh, lay some concrete slabs and uh, and some pipe. Lay some like, oh, I'd man you know, the, for oil, the kids for the kids. You know, laying pipe lay for the kids pipe for the kids. Uh, and uh, I the oil is very far away from my base. Uh, it is extremely far, and uh, uh, having to run all that pipe. You know, it's a question, Alex and Brad and Abby, like, do I just set up an oil production line making plastic stuff as like another ancillary base or do I, do I run a main line back to the base? It's like, what's the most you efficient? Let me just say, you are preaching to the choir. I know, I right? This is the eternal question. Am I right? It's a question yeah. I understand and ask a lot and yeah. could repeat back to you if you ask me to. <laughs> more and more people are saying this every day. Every day they're talking uh, about laying the pipes, you know, getting off biomass, all this shit. Everyone's talking about it. It's uh, it's uh, all I hear: election, COVID. Where am I gonna am I gonna lay the pipe at the oil plant, or am I gonna bring it all the way back to? Yeah, this is uh, this is all I keep hearing. Uh, Alex Navarro. Actually, mm -hmm. actually, I'm gonna let's bring Bacalar in here. Bacalar's been futzing with his mic for. Uh, we'll we'll come back. We'll come back in a second. But we're gonna. I, okay. Yeah, he's been. Finally, I'll, 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 just go if you would. No, rather, I, I, no, no, okay. no, no. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna. So good, does it, Alex? No, no, no. I wanna. I wanna. Get, Bacalar has been taking a lot of heat for this mic stuff, and I, I wanna hear loud and clear about this PS5. Um. Well, there's not a whole lot. Uh. I okay, can Alex. Say. What have you been up to? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick it up and bring it over here because, with my luck, <laughs> yeah. it'll 
you know, pee on me or something, and then everyone will be like, oh, you see what happened? It pees well, on you. Pick it up and bring it over here. Just Do don't burn it. Bring the controller over here. I can't. It's too big. Yeah, you're gonna tear I... a rotator cuff trying to pick that thing up. <laughs> By the way, so like it, you know, I will say standing next to an Xbox, it is comically large. Mm-hmm. It seems humongous. You know, like here, you could see it's a it fucking over. Buick, man. It's just like it's just like a very I large. Can't. Oh, there it is. Is that I next to? I can see it. I see the controller. I want to. I, I want to see it. the controller closer. The controller I could bring over. Um, yes. It it's it's just like the biggest freaking console I've ever seen, and that's hmm. fine. Whatever. Wow. Like you're, wow. you know, well, I can already see big. it now. Uh, uh, Jerf Bahakalar says it's too big. It won't fit inside your house. Broke it his, is too big. Broke his car. It's not too big. It's just very big hmm. and uh, super massive. It's um you know I think it's like like I said it's like almost comically large um and uh, that's about all I can really no 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 tell me about like, the controller so the controller is actually pretty great and I think right now like it's kind of the thing that I know a lot of people are talking about but I think that makes sense because it is a thing that I've truly like never experienced before and it's a yeah. thing that I was not aware that that you could do hmm. um and it has very uh, you know, hyper localized haptic feedback in a way that will surprise you the first time you have it. Oh, you that's a good like, quote. I like that one. You that's you that's sort of just be like, well, this thing's a fucking robot. I didn't, you know, like, <laughs> and that's kind of how it how it goes. Um, yeah. So it's it's really you know, and like, and to me, you're the game that we're allowed to talk about. Um, or at least the one <laughs> the level, portion. Yeah, cooling springs, the portion, right? Cooling Springs, that game's great. By Astrobot, the way. It's, just a very, it's basically like a, a watered down kind of like you know Mario Odyssey kind of thing in yeah. a way, where you're just sort of like go, jumping around a little worlds. You unlock all of these, you know, uh, um, PlayStation artifacts they call them, where you you know you <laughs> you know there's like dozens of them hidden throughout the entire game, and you kind of like you're like, oh right, I remember that PS2. Uh, you know, four-way controller adapter. <laughs> Sick. There it is. Check it out. You know, is like, it rumble? Um, <laughs> no, Vinny, it's on the screen. So, um, so just to be clear, the the game. What's the name yeah. of that game? It's Astrobot something. Astrobot. Like, Playground. I think it's called Astro's Playroom. Is okay. just the game. I'm gonna yeah. go grab the controller. Okay. I am at the point now where I am like, if I I'm like ready to like get email alerts <laughs> about when shit is going you're there out. okay i want yeah a playstation 5 so bad i want that freaking new controller yeah i want to play fortnite with the fancy controller uh, he's holding Can it you up pop to the, the plastic screen. off jeff's holding it up it looks can cool I pop the plastic off? yeah isn't that a thing where like the plastic is like you can take it off and put on new on the controller or are you on the console stuff on the you controller can... no shit really i, didn't I thought that. so yeah, let's break Jeff's yeah, controller keep, right keep, now. Let's get, get it, just, pop it yeah, just keep, use your teeth, one. man. Cool. Yeah, use your teeth. Yeah, just dig a screwdriver in there. Uh, I thought you could. Maybe uh, not. not. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, maybe that's a thing. I had never heard of that. Um, so, I mean, it is it is very, very different. Like, it is very different compared to the four. So yeah. I heard on a, a video, I think I think this was posted for CNET, is that the, the, the D-pad feels mushier. Yeah, that's that's like my gut, uh, my gut sort of takeaway. It mm. does. It just feels a tiny bit mushier, and I'm super sensitive to that thing. Uh, mm. You know, uh, it's not as it's it's completely different than the new Xbox One. The Xbox One is very clicky. This, you know, it it hasn't been an issue so far in the games that I've been playing, but it is definitely a bit mushier. There's no two mm. ways about it. I think. You know, just looking at it, the, the 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 sort of pieces of plastic that come out of the molding. Yeah, rip them off. They're a little, oh. yeah, but they're also <laughs> a little. They're a little flatter than the uh, than the ones in the DS4. Little, the DS4 feel oh. a bit more angular, if that makes sense. I'm sorry, you're talking and about the buttons. Little, I'm talking about the D-pad. The yeah, D-pad. Okay. The D-pad. Okay. Sorry. Uh, they kind of like are like concave, right? On the the old controller. Yeah, I mean they are on this too. But they're not as pronounced. Oh, interesting. Just, they, and and overall, they they there's a bit more of a feeling of separation here on the DS4 as opposed to the dual the dual sense here. So, um, um, uh, uh, Brad Shoemaker, Jeff Gersman have a, a look at the PS5 and uh, the dual sense. That's what it is the dual hmm. sense on GiantBomb.com. You also. <clears throat> Sorry, getting a little You're choked right? up here. No, I'm, I'm getting sad because I want one. Um, the the Dual Sense uh, and 
you have two separate videos, Jeff Bacalar. You have a dual sense, yeah. and a uh, and I love, I love. People should go check out. You should go check out Brad and Jeff Gerstmann's video. But actually, you should okay, to check okay, out okay, check okay, out okay, Bacalar's. Okay, you do a great thing where you put the controller on the table to kind of uh, uh, allow people to hear at least some of the haptic and, and force feedback from the the triggers, which I thought was a clever thing. Did you think of that by yourself, or did you see that somewhere? I did. Uh, I actually f I figured it out by accident, but <laughs> I nevertheless, you know. I once I realized like oh that's a really good way to kind of demonstrate what exactly is going on here. Um, good on you. Yeah the 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 little pings and everything that come out of the controller, not audio out of the speaker, but out of the you know the different sort of rumble motors in this thing, really were exaggerated when I had it resting mm. on the uh, on the the little tabletop I had there. So doing that, I think like gave a really good uh, indication of like what that feels like. So uh, I'm happy with how that came out for sure. But, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, I think like me personally, that's a more interesting video just because you get, you know, the unbox. I, I, I'm very lukewarm with unboxings. I think mm. they're, you know, kind of silly, but um, I get why they're popular. They're just, you know, they don't really appeal to me personally, but at the same time, like the, the controller video is where I think there's a lot of good information. So, uh, you know, definitely it was, check that out. I, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, so do you still have the stock shell on it or did you switch it out? Did you pop uh, it? It's, I just, I went on Amazon. <laughs> I ordered a bunch of different shells. They should be here by the end of the podcast. And then I will swap them out and show you. Exactly. Did you get the wood paneling one? Oh no, I got the carbon. The, I'm a carbon fiber guy. Nice. So I did that. Abby, he's scared um, to take it off. I can't. Well, you and I, Abby, will, will show uh, when we get ours. We're, yeah, we can pop ours off. Yeah. It's heavier than the, than the, oh, turn it on. It's what heavier the than, what, what's that? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It's heavier than the other controllers. It's heavier than the DS4 for sure. Well, it's more. It's, you got those plastics aren't. Right, <laughs> you know? They're not. I right. have so many options when you pop them off. Um, yeah. When does this come out? Do you the think 12th. there's any chance that on the 12th <laughs> I will be able to go into a store, okay, now, or now the difference online, between, and purchase it? Now the difference between you and one a guy my dad works with is no different. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, you uh, you do work with you work with those video games, right? You think they're hey. gonna have those uh, those PS5s on the hey, on the launch day? Uh, <laughs> hey, hold on, like? let me pull up the actual text message. Hey, <laughs> Jeremy. Oh man, remember me, your dad's. Oh no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, all anyway. Right. Hey, I hope your uh, <laughs> your your local recording doesn't look like it's blowing out, right? <laughs> Bacalar, okay. I just want to make well, you sure. You're kind of yelling. So. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I just want. Uh, okay. I would like a PlayStation Five very uh, badly. Uh -huh. I mean, my the advice got to me, and now I hear about this fun controller, and I'm like, I'm in. I want it. I want that controller. Look, my I also, my, you know, my advice is still what? to probably just wait. Like I'm, I'm playing the games too, right? Like. Yes. And I'm just telling, you know, like, I, I just, I don't think this is something, pe look, I get it. Like, you know, there is, at, at least there's like a quasi new thing. Like, I do think the controller surprised me in a way where I wasn't expecting mm. that kind of functionality to be the thing that, you know, wound up. It's still in know, the show, being, really. Being the takeaway. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Um, again, though, like, you know, I, I, I just think you are still there's still not i mean maybe if like ratchet and clank was day one and like a couple other things you know but as of right this second i just don't know if day one is the move abby we'll get there we'll be okay we'll be okay i know you're 100 percent right we're we'll gonna, be okay we're gonna be okay the of it, i just want to touch that fun control it's like if we were in the office yeah. i'd be like whatever, yeah, we whatever. Just play right with oh things, yeah and right like scratch that I know. itch completely i know but now I can't do that. I know. Just come over. You're more than welcome to come over. Well, now everybody's yeah. coming over, Bacalar. And now I'm not coming over, okay? Because that's unsafe. No. We just no. all get together. I don't like this. Mask, no. This is... over pinball machines for years. Oh. How come now I can come over? <laughs> oh. Uh, so, uh, check out, uh, Bacalar's two videos, uh, uh, YouTube and CNET, right? That's the best way to find them. And, uh, yeah, go just, yeah. Go check out um, in that order. Yeah, YouTube. <laughs> go watch a lot of YouTube, and then check out. Uh, just type Bacalar, and then go check out on Giant Bomb's YouTube channel or on GiantBomb.com. Uh, you can go see uh, Gersman and uh, Brad do an unboxing of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Apparently, no uh, USB-C cable included in there was my takeaway from that one. 
uh, and the, uh, oh, the X. yeah, and uh, the series S, I, I believe, is also in the, in that the video as well. Yeah, that's that's kind of surprising. I like that they both include the the new HDMI, right? The HDMI comes mm-hmm. in the in the X. God, I hope so. Um, I believe so. Yeah. Well, because it's got to uh, be well, a spec I... cable, right? Oh. Um. Oh. What? Hi. You're back. You just flashed. You're uh, fine. Oh. You flashed, but you're fine. I did. You I did. did. All right. Maybe after this, uh, when we go to the first break here, I'm going to rejoin because you guys all dropped out. No. Um, um, oh wow. That was you. Wow. Hundred percent the... you. Obviously, this is not the um, the only embargo here for PS5 stuff. Uh, so there's more stuff coming for sure. Uh, and then, you know, be able to talk about the games and more of the, the UI. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, that's that's really all I've been doing. Uh, you want me to talk about the other games I've been playing that I can talk about? Uh, no, first, first, we're going to roll up. Um, we're going to roll into uh, NHL. Let's talk NHL first. Let's get that. Okay. Let's, let's get that out of the way. Uh, Alex, uh, let's kick us off here with NHL. Uh, this won't take long. We right? kinda, yeah. we, we kind of do that last week, actually. And yeah, I'm not sure did. that I have That's a whole right. lot to add uh, okay. to, uh, to my NHL, NHL discussion other than there's a quick look now up on the site featuring yours truly and resident ice hockey expert Jeff Bacalar, hmm. uh, the microphone oil himself. No one will understand <laughs> if they didn't watch the free show. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm very lukewarm on that game. I, I think there's it, it's fun enough hockey, but it's fun enough in the way that like the last few NHL games have been. And the stuff they have done to the be a player mode, the franchise mode, the the, the slight adjustments they have they have added there did not really change the experience for me in any meaningful way. It's just like still kind of feels like I'm playing last year's game. Jeff, you kind of seem to be in the same ballpark with that. Yeah, I am. I am almost at the point where it's like I can't talk about this game anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have to after today. So uh, yeah, I am. I am. I, I think in the quick look, we I think we did a good job at like you know, totally uh, exercising all the demons uh, associated with, you know, the current state of that game. So, <laughs> so you, you yeah. can check that out. That is live on the site now. NHL 21, a quick look. Uh, all right. Back Alar, um, let's jump back to you for a moment here. What else have you been playing? Um, so I've been playing Watch Dogs, and I've been playing um, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Let's start. Oh, let's cool. start with the the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. You can watch uh, on on Giant Bomb if you are interested. This is the remote control uh, Mario Kart car. Jan Ochoa <laughs> did, t- took a tour around his house. Which, if you are interested in Mario Kart uh, Live or interested in Jan's house, uh, you should check out. <laughs> you should check out that Bye. video. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I think he did that with Jason as well, kind of talking on top of it. It's a fun video. Bacalar, tell us your thoughts on the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Um, so I think the gimmick of the whole thing works pretty well, and I and I think that's a lot of fun, and it's definitely fun with uh, with with kids involved. Um, so what do you get here? I you get you get the car, which has a camera on it, right? Right. So you get that car. You get four gates and two four cardboard gates and two cardboard directional signs okay uh for a hundred bucks yeah it's no, like it, it more? It's just kind of just kind of set it up it's um it's a game where you use the switch to control this remote control car and there's a camera on it it's kind of an augmented reality game with the feed that you're getting on the switch will show outline of the track and all sorts of fun stuff like a mario kart game would have and and the other players and stuff like that as you're driving around the real car on a in your space or wherever you are right are you looking at price yeah it is it, it's right and you have to design the space and my biggest you know complaint about all of that setting it up is fine setting up the entire you know you could introduce like little obstacles mm-hmm. like you know we have a we have a playroom and you know we have all these like you know ball pit balls and we threw them all over the course and driving you know the cart through all that it's a lot of fun like that's and the way the, the way the tech there works pretty well the problem is that it does get kind of tedious after a while with like you know you play the same course once you play it twice and then you do like a whole grand prix of it <laughs> and you're just like all right what am i doing because you um, you make the course you set the gates up and then you kind of uh draw the course using the car correct you kind of like paint correct. it correct yeah yeah you, so once you design the course so you basically the you, you turn the you open up the game and the game syncs right away with the with the with the cart. 
once they're synced, it puts you into this sort of like explore mode. Hmm. And to get going, you have to find the first gate. And when you find the first gate, when it sees the gate through the camera, you can then access all the different functionality. You can build a course, you can start the the races, you can start the the heats that um, you can do for competitive, you know, time uh, competition stuff. So that's the the core sort of way you, you set it all up. It's when you want to make it like a game you sit down and play for a little <laughs> yeah. bit is when it gets a little dicey. And by the time you've done your race three times, you want to change things up. Yeah. And look, that's fine. My biggest complaint with this is the range on it. The range is bad. It's not good. It just does not let you like if I were sitting here yeah. and the adjacent room to me, the playroom here, it probably would not work super reliably. So do you, you think basically you almost have to race around yourself? Well, is like it you, it's is it feel like it has to be line of sight? At the very yeah, at the very it's, least. It's very okay. much that. Like you've been in my kitchen. Like I have yeah. a, we have an island in the yeah. middle of the kitchen. Yeah. And it's very nice I was kitchen. sitting at thanks. I was sitting at the dining room table and I could and when the cart went around the island, it it pixeled out. Okay. And I was like, wow, ha like that, that sucks. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, that we, we get that explain that to like a five-year-old and they're like, well, this thing, what, what's going on? So yeah, you know, a kind of a, kind of like a mixed bag in performance. I do think when it does work well and you have really solid connectivity, I think it's super fun. Um, and there's nothing like seeing like you're racing and all of a sudden you see your dog on the track and you're like, oh, you know, like that's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of great moments there. So that's, uh, that's, that's really about it. I mean, there's a lot of unlockables. There's a lot of customization with how you can change what your cart looks like. It's cool that you get to decide what sits under each of the four gates. You know, you can sort of, uh, cycle in different items and enemies and whatever it is. So that stuff's fun. Um, you know, for me, I'm like gauging how interested my kid is in it. And he still, he still wants to play it like once a week. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, you know, now, well, he's a big AstroBot guy now, but you know, he, um, a lucky kid. I know this kid's just spoiled. He has no him. idea. He yeah. has no idea. He has no idea. I go, I sent him and I go, you shut your, I just sign this <laughs> you right sign now. this embargo right now. You, you cannot sign this embargo yeah. right now. You don't go talking about it. So, uh, but yeah, his interest is, is waning a little bit and, and mine is too. Like, it's just, um, <laughs> what's that bandaid on your, your finger? I, I burned myself on the on the Xbox. It was so hot. <gasps> Child burns himself on Xbox. Uh, <laughs> runs so hot. Headline writes itself. Yeah, you're just uh, putting me in a real uncomfortable spot here. Um, so yeah, you know it's um it's look it's fun. Is it a hundred dollars fun? Few things are. I, I don't know. I, it seemed to me having not played it, but watching videos of it and doing the same kind of dance of like, oh, would this be this seems like a real pleasure point for the kids, right? Like, oh, they'd get this and be super psyched. But maybe in that um uh what's the cardboard we thing? The 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 cardboard switch stuff. Labo. Maybe in that labo way of like, okay, this is like the a week and then it kind of winds up in a corner uh and never touched again. I mean y yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, you know, that's the thing, like he, you know, he had a friend over and they were like sitting on the couch wearing masks playing this <laughs> and I could tell like, oh, they're bored. Like, they're just, <laughs> you know, cause like they're just passing back the controller, yeah. you know, it's to me, I understand it's probably a technical limitation of the, you know, you can't have two carts on one switch, but it's like the fact that you can't do that. And I get it. It's, it's probably not physically possible. It sucks. That just sucks. Yeah, and, it does. You know, you're, you're, it's look. I think on paper the idea is it's kind of genius in a way, right? Yeah. Like you're just sort of like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Like, of course, this is this is great, and it's great that you can bring the switch because all you need is the is the portable switch, right? So like, you don't have to play it where it's docked. You can make a course in any room that you have. Uh, they don't really want you doing it outside. Um, <laughs> Don't do it outside. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but know, like, there's, there's... is that great or would it have been even better if they had made a dedicated device for this that worked uh, through walls, not line of sight, that you could use outside? Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happens. What I don't do you mean? know. Just like, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different uh, oh, break it apart oh, from sorry. the switch. Yeah. Like, right. uh, like, like the, if they had just... Wii U this shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you're saying hundred. Okay, so maybe that's like a five hundred dollar. Oh, no, I, I, I don't yeah, know. Maybe. What, I don't know. what do I know? What do I? What it do I know? Multiple, I, I hear what you're saying. Maybe, maybe that is the right way to do it. Maybe it's something they pursue. You know, as like a using this as like a learning opportunity. I mean, it takes um, up room, right? Like that thing. You need some yeah, like you, real estate. You need you need a big space. Like you, you know that our playroom. You know we have like I probably have like a ten by ten space. I'm playing it in there, yeah. and it's cramped in that space. Does it work well on carpet? Yeah. So you know, like low pile carpet. I yeah. Think is not good. not my shag I mean, carpeting I have in yeah, every room. The, the well, you show me your your master bathroom. The shag yeah. wall, the wall, it wouldn't work in there. <laughs> it's not okay. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's, shag it's on the ceiling. Even. It's it's now mostly yeah. matted down from filth. So I, hopefully, oh, it, <laughs> so hopefully it'll be fine now. I know. Every time you walk on it, it crunches. But whatever, that's how it works. Um, yeah, like, the it flake flakes up. It's basically. Have you seen those rooms in uh, Last of Us where they, they know where the uh, the clickers are around? Yeah. So it's basically that. You guys know what it I'm would talking work about. on clickers. It would work on clicker carpet. <laughs> work on the, uh, the the clicker clicker fungus. Okay, good. That's, the fact that it does work on carpet, I think, is cool. The fact that you can race in different speeds is cool. The fact that like boosts are physical boosts are cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. You know, when you get hit by a, a, a shell, you stop. Right. Um, that stuff's fun. Um, but uh, but you know, there's like equal parts great and equal parts bad on this thing, which is uh, which is pretty interesting. Can you record on the Switch? I think you can. Okay, those are the videos I'm now interested in of like a little Mario Kart car creeping up on somebody as they're doing something. Because mm -hmm. uh, you see Mario in there as the as the overlay in the AR. It's not the toy, right? You see like a Mario Kart. Well, uh, he's overlaying the toy. Yeah. Overlaying the toy, yeah. So like just creeping up on like slowly moving up on like people fighting or like parents uh, having a, a real serious conversation about uh, taxes or something uh, and th throw a shell at him. <laughs> Or, or in my case, you could watch the gradual progression of my dog being, <laughs> be, becoming okay with Mario. Did, did he? <laughs> like, in the beginning, wanted to rip his head off, and then was sort of just like, "Oh, it's you again. What do I care?" So, <laughs> watching that progression has been a fun uh, uh, story. Uh, backlog. Anything else you want to get to here? Uh, we can well, do you play the Watch Dogs. dogs. You play yeah. the Watch Dogs. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about. I want to play it. Tell me about this Watch Dogs. Out? I see people playing it. But... I think it's out. It's out. not out yeah. yet. No, I know that. I think it's out on Friday. Clicking reports. Got it. Um, yeah, that's a Watch Dogs game. Uh, I'm. I've been playing. This it. is Watch Dogs uh, Legions. Yeah. Yes. Or Legion. So I, just to be clear, I only finished the first Watch Dogs game. I did not. There's. This is the third one, right? This is Watch Dogs yes. two, and then Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah, I believe yeah, that is right. right. Yes. I believe I did not even touch two. Hmm. Okay. And I played about four hours of this one. Okay. Two is much better than one, to be fair. Oh, all right. Well, I played a lot of one. I played a bit of two, but I just didn't get into it. But I'm curious about three. It looks cool. I played two hours of this game also during a preview event a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, I think it's the same two, a couple hours that I played. Right. Um. So you do play that first scene again. Uh, and then in the demo, it jumped us way forward. Here, you sort of just go right into the game. It's, um, you know, I think it looks great. I'm playing it on that 3080, and it looks fantastic. Okay. Um, no problems on the PC so far? No. I did try and max out something that I clearly was not supposed to max out, and <laughs> mm. I got to a part of the game where it was just like, mm, I don't know who's running this, <laughs> but not not you, buddy. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic. But it is very much the same kind of, from what I can gather so far, the, the same kind of like thing again. And I and I want to add mm -hmm. one other thing that maybe it's just that I think the whole sort of moment to moment play of Watchdog is of Watchdogs is just sort of inherently kind of dumb. <laughs> I mean, it is, but yeah, go because, ahead. Because the whole game, and I get it, like. You know, right away, you, you know, there's a lot of gunplay in the beginning. You're just like shooting people already, and you're you, you sneak. You know, there's some stealth stuff, and then you're shooting, and then you're driving, and then the hacking starts. Right, and mm -hmm. the whole game is just like you look around and you just jump and jump, and that the whole game is just jumping from camera to camera, and that's kind of a lot of what that is, of a lot of what Watchdog's yeah. DNA is. Yeah, and I just don't think those. Mm mechanics are super fun to do 
Mm. Um, and I think that's why this game is not really landing with me in a way that makes me kind of want to keep playing it. I, you know, the story to me is I, I've been able, I just kind of glossed over. And this is the second time I've, I've ingested it. Um, so I don't know. I, it's just not really clicking with me, uh, you know, outside of the really impressive fidelity. Um, I, I never got hooked on Watch Dogs one or two, kind of in a similar way that you're describing of the I in on paper and conceptually and watching sometimes like a really good player play it like this looks like fun, and then playing it I never felt like I was having that good of a time even in like a mayhem open world way didn't right like uh, I played some of two and it was fun to do the remote control car like the take control of the cars and and stuff like that, uh, but beyond that like when it came time for the mission stuff I, I it never really never really hooked me so i i, I don't know i, it, it's I feel like whole, like hit y to hack yeah you're hacking now because you hit y hack, yeah, hack, hack. it's the hack but button it you know and i that maybe to me that whole thing is just stale uh and and just really just unenticing and i you know, look, I do have other things I, I, I'm i playing right now that are, are, are pretty cool, and I'm definitely excited about some of them. But this is just, for me, not really, you know, you know, ticking the boxes. I mean, if it, I think if you wanted something different from the moment-to-moment watchdogsness of it, like, this was not going to be that game mm-hmm. because the big hook, obviously, is the, you know— there's no protagonist, you know, the narrative is whatever characters you recruit and build for your, your little London dead sec set. And, you know, that, that to me seemed like the most promising thing though. It it sounds like there are some limitations to like what they are actually able to do with that. I just want to briefly shout out former giant bomb staffer, Austin Walker wrote a very good review of watchdogs legion over on vice uh, that kind of gets into the nitty gritty of where that narrative starts to break down and where it works as far as like the recruit anyone, the moment to moment stuff there. Uh, And I think, you know, I I think he has some, some, some interesting thoughts on that stuff. I want to play it still because I did like watchdogs too. I'm not sure that the tone of this one ever really quite worked for me, especially with the, the, the preview build that I played. There's just something about the fucking children of men style, like dystopia, but with a bunch of chucklehead idiots fucking running around, hacking everything while all that shit is going on in the background. Just, it felt weird to me, but I do still kind of want to check it out. Did you like the demo? I, that's, that's the thing is like the tone of it. Just, I couldn't quite find it there while i was playing like it just it felt like it was oscillating too much between dire deathly seriousness and that the cheerful british voiced ai that just jokes at you constantly like i couldn't yeah. find the equilibrium between those two things at least in the the limited time that i played because i do remember coming out of that demo being kind of maybe interested but mm-hmm. um but yeah, I just for whatever reason, fast forward two months and and diving in for about four hours, it's just like, it just it hasn't, hasn't grabbed you. Uh, it hasn't grabbed me. Yeah, I think we're I think we're moving out of um I think we're moving out of zany post apocalyptic hijinks like the uh, Borderlands and the um uh, uh what's the, what's the the id one the uh, rage yeah rage to the kind of like yeah. Oh, anything. We wow. We're so, you know, you know, it's a uh, madcap uh, adventures with spikes on shoulder pads and, and uh, digital faces, you know, that kind of level of zany. I, I think I, I feel like I don't want that anymore or I'm not sure yeah. when I did. I mean, you know, like it's it's different, you know, with like you, you got to choose that. That style has to be sort of, you know, incepted a bit earlier. Right. Like. <laughs> It, with especially with a game development it's not like a movie where you can really be done in five months and and kind of like call it a day yeah where the development like this, takes a while something like this it's uh you know there's there's a, there's a hangover <laughs> you know, there's a cultural hangover that i feel like we're gonna be really have no way out of it and you know like cyberpunk is gonna come out and that game is it it <laughs> We'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. But like, I just think like, yeah, like that game, I don't know. Is that game going to feel like the cyberpunk thing you want just because of time and what happens? And I, I think that's a different aesthetic, but, uh, it's, it's, it's that, different, I but think cy- cyberpunk has a, you know, 
it's got a bible a cyberpunk universe bible that i think goes for a different vibe you know it's more it's more in that yes. you know it's it is not the rage uh watchdog no. thing no i think when we are finally and by finally i mean next week uh roaming the wastelands looking for scrap and you know little bits of drinkable water <laughs> yeah we will look back <laughs> on these wacky post-apocalyptic experiences and realize what sweet summer children we were no i'm gonna be the guy i'm gonna be i'm gonna have uh in this post-apocalyptic dream we'll have grown my hair back only to have shaved it into a cool faux hawk uh and you're gonna roll up on me and i'm gonna have like a, a baseball bat uh and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be swinging and it's gonna be some like it's gonna be a head right on the ground and i'm gonna be like four and you know with a bad <laughs> accent and just like knock a head and it's gonna go through like a tire and there's gonna be a bunch of people clapping and then you're gonna go up to me and be like oh no he's the leader of this group and i'm gonna come over and be well you won't you know like uh, all all really uh Vinny, yeah you, you think your Vinny. accent would develop that fast and pretty quickly i we're talking like two weeks here or so yeah yeah, yeah roughly I, I, not only would his accent develop fast but Vinny, oh god i yeah. want to see the faux hawk you can grow <laughs> i want to see the shape that that takes yeah it would because be, it will be, be something i have never seen before i know <laughs> that oh, yeah. um and then uh and then the you know, the person who brought you in and be like this is uh this is he's gonna be scary but this is alex navarro uh, he's looking for water, and I'm there immediately. Have to kill that person because I'm 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 so wacky, right? So I'll just immediately be like, mm -hmm. and then be like, uh, "What do you want?" And be like, you know, then you earn my trust by doing missions for me. You're gonna kill rats in the basement, and that's and right. that's how I ended up as Vinny's blood bag. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, Alex, anything you could talk about game wise? No, that's the thing. So, like, I, I actually did start playing a bunch of games over the last couple of days, but all of them are embargoed <laughs> until next week. So I can't talk about them, but there will be some games to talk about next week. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're, their games are they're coming. So are consoles. And uh, uh, I am looking forward to... Uh, kind of look, still looking forward to Legion, even though all that being said, would like to see it. And yeah. if I, I don't know if I want to spend my, <laughs> I don't know if I want to spend my money on it, but I want to, I want to play it. I am looking forward to... Uh, um, uh, uh, Valhalla, uh, that's coming out two weeks. Is that right? Is that a launch? Two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, that's it's already soon. Done. That sounds. Um, yeah, I know it's it's it's, I mean, on, it's on the horizon. I am still looking forward to that, uh, even though I have mixed feelings about the direction Assassin's Creed went. But I'm I'm, I'm also uh, I'm looking forward to hearing people who might be playing it talk about it at some point. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, but, uh, Abby, anything else you want to cover or Bacalar or, or Alex, Abby, you look like you got, you got something. Me. Okay. Yeah. Abby, what you, what you got? Um, everybody has sent me a lot of VR recommendations. Thank you so much. I do very much appreciate them. Also, I didn't get to play much this week, but I'm excited to look at more VR games. I love <laughs> VR. I think it's so cool. Uh, right now I'm looking into mods for Beat Saber so I can get more songs on it, which everyone says I should do. Also, I don't know why I'm so excited about these. There is a, I got a bicycle, I got 7-Eleven oh. branded bicycle playing cards. Uh -huh. and I think they're the coolest shit in the whole wide world. Aren't That's these cool. so cool? Do they have a good feel? Like what so slick. Show me what the Jokers look like. Is it just a hot yeah, dog? Is it like a, a wrinkled up hot wish, dog? Is it a Slurpee? Well, they do have like, they came with, so they, they're bicycle playing cards, but yeah. they, they are coupons. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> Which I enjoy. Uh -huh. I mean, the colors are like. 7-Eleven oh, Okay, all oh, right. That's cool. All right. I thought Aren't the joke so... would just be like diarrhea, but turn What's out. uh what's no, a fun thing? Show me the so show me the, cool. the kings, the suicide the king. king. There we go. Suicide, suicide king. king. That's a suicide king, right? It's yep. back of it. And then the, the jokers nice. or the jacks. One of them, one eye jack. jack? Two eye jack. Two of them only have one eye. One eye Are, aren't there rules? Here's a one eye jack. Okay. Jack of hearts. Oh yeah, look at that guy. Look at that guy. I these don't. I think these. I love Seven yeah. Eleven. I don't know why I love Seven Eleven. I love Seven Eleven. I like lived near Seven Eleven for like seven years, <laughs> and I would go there all the time. Yeah. I was a local. Yeah. Um, I just I love these stupid fucking playing cards. I think they're so cool. There's seven. Why are why do they have Seven Eleven branded bicycle why, playing cards? Why? Why not? I don't is what I say. But I but, love but it's them. Kind of like, it's kind of like Supreme in a way. Like you're. I feel like. In that buying decks of cards on the fucking right. Jersey boardwalk. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> oh, get your Seven Eleven brick, you know, or your Seven Eleven crowbar. I feel like that's what we're gonna we're gonna see next. My uh, my mom used to work at a Seven Eleven for a, a brief bit, and then really? uh, yeah, she used to get me comic wow. the comic books with the covers ripped off that they would uh, that didn't sell that they'd send back, and she'd give them to me. Wow, look at that! I hope that's not illegal. Don't come after my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or where's the, oh, I need that G.I. Joe versus Transformer comic without a cover. <laughs> I was looking for that. Um, there was a, I knew, I, let's just say I knew some hooligans who would go into the 7 Eleven, grab that uh, giant Slurpee cup, and then mm-hmm. put, a bunch, put a bunch of candy bars in there and then fill it up with Slurpee uh, and then pay for that Slurpee and then dig out their candy bars that they smuggled out of that 7 Eleven, hidden in a vat of Slurpee. It's not, it's not our, it's not their fault that the uh listen to you shuffle those cards uh wow you're a magician do some close-up i'm really not good at card anything i can do a bridge do it but i really can't do oh (laughs) you're making card (laughs) tricks good job (laughs) beautiful um good 7-eleven deck any other things you've been playing aside from uh solitaire with your 7-eleven deck i mean we talked about the games that we're both playing a couple of horror games i'm still playing fortnite and putting uh too much money into it a lot of good halloween skins coming and then you know you get a skin and then it's like well now i gotta get a good dance to go oh, with boy. it lately i've been oh, playing boy. as a uh, bone peely which is a banana that's like cut in half you can see the inside of him he's got like bones inside Ooh, banana um, shouldn't I like have to call bones. Him banana oh nice. i love him and then he, he's got an emote where he plays his ribs like a xylophone um Ooh. it's really something else um the halloween okay so i will update on the halloween fort nightmares which is like normal Fortnite battle royale but then at the end of it you turn into a ghost and then the ghosts are basically all in one big team (laughs) and then you have to like kill the surviving players Mm. i will say being a ghost it takes too long also there's some issues with it in the sense of like i will play with like a party of people but then I will die first or someone else will die first. And they're sort of like not really in the party anymore. Like you still have the voice chat. So one, I just help my teammates and I really shouldn't. And there's like a thing where like sometimes they'll shoot me and it's like, no, I'm the good one. Um, And also it's just like the ranking system makes no sense. Like yesterday I was playing with someone in duos and we were like the top three or it was like one other living team left. And then there were like two other ghosts around. And then we died and then it was like, you ranked number 13. And it's like, that makes no sense. <laughs> um, it just, it, it was like puzzling. I don't understand how that really works, but um, all in all, I like it. I like the aesthetic of it. I do wish they had the option to like just do regular Fortnite Cause it's like, you got to do the Fortnite nightmares and it's going on for this amount of time and you're got to stick with it. I wish there was like an option to be like, or you could just do regular Fortnite in like a Halloween map either way. It's fun. I think it also just would have been better if it was like, like, I don't know. I was talking to someone. They, they were like, maybe it should be like a horde mode where like you get in and the ghosts are still there, but it's just like not other players. And it's like a horde mode while you're also doing a battle royale. That might be more interesting. I don't know. It's just like when you're a ghost, it just takes too long. Have they had anything? And you that... can't do anything. Like, I wish I could still like fish as a ghost. I wish I could like fish do other things as a ghost. Yeah. Like fish. I love fishing in the game. It's very fun. More questions? Yeah, uh, like yeah. Sorry, you threw me off with there. the fishing. That seemed um, to really throw you off there. <laughs> um, uh, d- 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 uh, oh boy, uh, boy, I'm so yeah. nervous at this interview. Uh, Abby Russell, uh, do they have any kind of uh, PVE or like versus the AI modes in it at all? Have they in your uh, experience? Have they done have those? I have not navigated outside of the regular modes. My military elite Fortnite group, <coughs> they do like to um, <laughs> fish. Like there are like other modes that you can do that like practices your like building and play stuff. And it's just like a lot of like building practice, like creative mode type stuff. I don't really fuck with that. Other people do. So I don't, I don't know if I can really answer that for you. Do they have, what, do they still have the Fortnite other game? Is that a thing? The, the original not battle it's Royale mode, the world. Yeah, I think so. I think they've mostly neglected it. <laughs> um, and I think the people who have paid money for it are a little peeved about it. <laughs> and can like you get into that if you like launch Fortnite? Is it like well, get and save the I world? The, yeah, I mean, it's like you launch in, and then there's like the three panels. So it's like battle royale, and then like the two other ones that I never even fucking <laughs> okay. look at or read. And I just hit X X okay. X, bring me in, bring me in, bring me in, and then I just do the thing I always do. All right. Mm. Um, if there's not anything else, we're gonna take a quick little break here, uh, and and we'll come back. In just a moment, I'm gonna I'm gonna rejoin this Google chat and uh, this. All the pictures are gonna shift around a little bit. Get ready for that fun surprise. Uh, stay tuned. We're gonna get to the news in a second here. Let me get the music. We'll be right back, folks. After this break. <laughs> And we are back, folks. Ooh. Hi. Wait, wait, hold on. Hello. 
We're back, folks. Maybe we're we not. Back, we're back, folks. You uh, <laughs> don't do that, Alex. You've got a you got a little bar over. It looks like a little mustache. That's <laughs> no. I don't see anything. No, it's gone now. Okay, it disappeared. I didn't see it. it was, you had, <laughs> you had, wait, it's back. Okay, hold on. I got to get the mouse off the screen. Wait, wait, what? You had like a mustache with a... <laughs> right where your face was, it was a mustache, but it was like the I... mute headphone thing, uh, but it was like right uh, right there. So it all was... the thing only you could see. Well, no, the rest of the audience saw it too, so... Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> if they're watching the video version. That sounds fun. Someone screen it that. was very fun. It looked very funny to me. All right. It's uh, the only time I'll ever have a decent mustache in my life. <laughs> we are back. Uh, and... We're going to talk about some news. I got news. Yeah. My son oh. wants an allowance. What do we do? What is it? What do we... Give, give, like, give him one. We're give in him a, one. Do we do chore list? Do we do no chore list, but you just help out the fam? Do we do chore list? Chore list. Garbage. Take the garbage out? Chore list. Or I just remember, collect the garbage. Okay. That's yeah. a good one. Growing up, Start we had simple. a spreadsheet that had like your name and your chore and the day of the week. It's a straight chore it. list. You, chore you list. work for money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, why else would he need an allowance? Also, what is he going to put money Beyblades. He wants to buy Beyblades. But don't you just buy those for him now anyway? Why don't you uh, make him uh, understand like how much his <laughs> occupants in that home costs in terms of the mortgage? No child should know that. <laughs> okay. No and child then, needs that information. And then just let him work that off. Okay. So you're just a debt. <laughs> just he's yeah. got a he's got a debt he's he needs to debt. work towards. He's um, to you and his mom. So, I will place. say the first allowance I ever got, I was not doing chores. I was just like my parents would give me like five dollars a week, and that mm. was kind of it, you know. And then once I got to be a little bit older, let's say like seven, eight years old, they're like, "All right, now it's time. You got to start working for this. We'll increase it a little bit, but you gotta you gotta start doing some chores around the house." Yeah. So we're we're we got a couple of schools of thought going. Abby represents one. Alex represents another. I I, I was kind of initially on the ch list of chores. You do them, you get paid. Alex, uh, definitely another school of thought of the hey, you just get kind of this spending income, a tiny teaching. bit of walking around money, tiny bit of walking yeah. around money, some oh. some learn, and but you got to save some of it. You got to do the the other one. Uh, mm -hmm. The third one is, and that kind of dovetails into the third one, which is hey, you you get this kind of stipend, but you have to help the family. Like you're, just, we don't, you shouldn't yeah. have to have a list, but you should be helping the family out by doing taking the garbage out or doing whatever. But That's we shouldn't so, have to put a like, list. I know. Loose. Yeah. I listen. It's also yeah. like, so I feel like for me, some of that like unspoken helping shouldn't need the money incentive. Whereas I feel like a chore list is like, this is your job. That's right. I also yeah. think no, you're for right. me though, I feel like growing up, we had a chore list, but I'm, I don't think it was at an, and in any way tied to an allowance. I think oh, we just had a chore list that okay. we had to do. Yes. I can tell so, you right now that I was fucking useless around the house <laughs> until they started giving me an incentive to do chores. I was sandbagging it hard <laughs> until uh, they finally was like, well, you know, if you want that money, Hey, maybe you uh, gotta do some work. Yeah, we we had the chore list. I don't think it was tied to money. Uh, and I think it was to go get a job if you want money. Yeah. Uh right. like, I mean, like uh, you do these things because you, you live in this house kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we I had a similar thing, and then I think I hit high school and I was like desperate for a job <laughs> at like 13 anyway. Yeah. And it was like, I'm walking dogs, I'm doing this yeah. until I could like legally get a job. And then I immediately legally got a job and was there for like four years. I had a paper route and the uh, um and uh, that was my job. Damn. Yeah. Old fat, old fashioned paper route. I was just me on the corner with my little newsy hat being like, extra, extra, like, extra, extra, cyberpunk delayed, extra. Um, <laughs> hey, I really wanted a paper route and I really I, I looked into it. And as soon as they told me what time I had to get up in the morning to deliver newspaper, I was like, I fuck, absolutely not. Not oh, going to happen. Man. Oh, man. You had to it go. was like five or six in the morning, man. Yeah. The news comes out early. Listen, yeah. You had to I just realized. Uh huh. That I already do somewhat of an allowance mechanic with my child. Okay. What we do is if he wants a thing, okay, he's really into beaker creatures. Yeah, they're right? cool. I, can, I should, when I bring over those clothes, I'll bring it over the beaker creature sets we have. Wait, are they, but they're, they're 
they're cracked they're open those right? are the yeah. eggs but we've got the lab like the the plastic yeah, no, no, no. I, I need those eggs i need those sweet <laughs> eggs baby. That's what, what are you people talking about uh they're like they're... I, I, I will there's like this happens when you like have a kid uh-huh. or like teach kids where you like know all about the like weird children's uh-huh. like economy of toys <laughs> that like the second you're like in high school or don't aren't around kids anymore it's like gone. what it doesn't the fuck even is exist this new thing yeah like toy fads really come and go so quick they do uh <laughs> so what i uh do is we've devised a system where look we go hey man if you want a new set of beaker creatures uh-huh. by the way beaker creatures come in these like little uh eggs yeah you put the egg in water and then they bubble up like Alka Seltzer, and out comes, uh, you know, like it's like a blind box, but a it's blind, a blind box. It's a blind box. Got to collect uh, them all. And he's got like all of series one, most of series two, and now series three. He's trying to make some make some dents in that collection. So we say, all right, you want six eggs? You have to, you know, work towards it. So we give him these, um, we give him these like little pom poms in a jar, and when he fills the jar yeah he gets beaker creatures now he fills the jar by just doing good shit so i guess mm-hmm. that is the allowance mechanic right where it's like, right oh you weren't a dick today three pom-poms <laughs> oh you brush your teeth without you know crying about it three pom-poms you got dressed by yourself in your room we didn't even pick out your clothes for you that's a five pom-pom wow. activity that's right a, this yeah. inflation of the pom-pom economy is going to destroy oh, yeah. it the pom-pom the amount of pom-poms is directly related to the difficulty and or impressive <laughs> nature of said okay. activity. so so like we we talked about that and in our uh and as we were forming our government within our household um it right. was it was deemed that you do not get rewarded for being a good person you and uh you you that is inherent that, that is there's out in society yes that that is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right you actually lose money you and you get to get to the back of the line um no, that, that uh we will not do in this house we will not do rewards for being that is the bare minimum uh and but also we don't necessarily do try not to do punishments um for being a bad person so i'm not sure what we're doing we're anarchy i think so wait if they're bad if they behave poorly yeah like a conversation is it like hey sit out and let's have a conversation it is definitely have a conversation kind of assess what the uh what the kind of motive and the where we're at on the guilt uh like the kind of personal feelings of it are but if it's not that bad, I try not to get. I personally try not to get too bent out of shape about it. Like you know, but if it if it is if it like intentionally malicious is a thing where we definitely are, oh, yeah. uh, like are yeah. That's that's the that's the I think the like oh, I I made dad sad guilt. That's mm. that's the like uh, hey I'm not angry. Just nobody likes a sad dad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> you know that's <laughs> the <laughs> that's uh that's the part. I don't know. raising kids fucking tough. Seems wild. Can't tough. imagine. Uh, it's so oh, I never do it. It is so easy and I will never judge any <laughs> any parent ever for uh for or would be parent for opting out uh uh for doing anything because it is so hard to do anything and it is so easy to do anything. It is so easy for me to be like just be good and I will buy you that fucking thing. You know, like it is so yeah. easy to slip into that. You want to um, shortcut that process as much as possible. Yeah. Or or to be like, you know what? You, you you embarrass me, so you do not get to play games this weekend. And like that, definitely, it, it's it's so. Oh, and then people, I hate people who are like, blah, 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 you know, with the oh, like, yeah. Who are those people? The people they came uh, up you and should, go, hey, you hey, hey, yeah, you should not, you don't, don't, don't reward and don't, 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 you know. And it's like, you know what? Go write your book. Go write a book. You know what? Fuck Give you, me- Doctor Spock. Yeah. You know what? I'm okay with that sort of advice when it comes to like a pet or a dog, <laughs> right? Because they kind of all act the same, especially dogs. But like, don't be doing that shit with kids. Get and and get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm but I'm just here to tell you. There's you know, a pandemic uh, on for God's sakes. Get out of my house. Um, uh, I walk around waving my wand at people. What is that <laughs> it's the person. It's it's every it's every like how to be a parent. Like you know, <laughs> I get it. Here's here's my new here's it. my new philosophy. I just came up with, and it's like I hate that. Oh, somebody give me a new book. That's like oh, it's there's so no. Like- 
Yeah. Someone came up to me with that accent. <laughs> I know we're taking it. I'm taking a literal, literal sort of take on that. But like that'd be that'd be amazing. But you're like, I just want to hear you talk. Uh, <laughs> Buy my book. Um, so let's <laughs> let's. Start. There are no bad children. Um, let's get into the oh, news. Let's get let's into, get the... into the news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, really Al- not making me want to get into the news here. <laughs> uh, Alex, let's get into the news. What do we have here? Oh, uh, we got a bunch of stuff actually. Uh, so I'm going to lead with this one. Halo. Uh, I love it. You love it. We all love it. Um, but people did not necessarily love that Halo Infinite uh, demo they showed a, f- a few months back uh, during Microsoft's live stream. Um, Chris Lee, who had taken over directorial duties on Halo Infinite uh, at least since 2019 has also now stepped away from the project. Okay. Um, He is still at Microsoft, but he is no longer working on Halo Infinite's campaign. Uh, And he, I believe, is the third uh, uh, major creative person on that project to step away over the last couple of years. Uh, Mary Olson, who is an executive producer, who was working on campaign development, left 343 last year. Uh, and Tim Longo, who was originally uh, the creative director on that game, uh, got reassigned as well. So I don't I'm trying to I, th- I think Joe Statton has maybe taken back over uh, the campaign uh, while a guy named Pierre Hintz, or Heinz is now working on the multiplayer or has been working on the multiplayer. But, you know, that development has been very tumultuous and it seems like they are still making changes as time goes on here. So. It's 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 been delayed until 2021. There's no there's yes. no further information than that than the 2021 date. Okay. Not huh. currently. Listen, you know, I'm gonna tell you all a little story in case you missed it. Mm-hmm. Oh no. There was once Gather the, around, everyone. There was once this game that was in development hell. Nobody wanted it. Nobody would touch it. That game came out and was one of my favorite games that maybe maybe in my top ten. That game is called Sleeping Dogs. Now that is a troubled okay. development game, and that just goes to show you that doesn't mean a game's going to be terrible if it is toxic. <laughs> if, it, if it's if it sounds like it is exploding uh, behind the scenes, right? Like, the one the one maybe aspect of that that I don't want to uh-huh. like maybe maybe didn't think about uh-huh. is that uh, after all of that development, they only got to make that game. They made and that game, and then they one no, that? and then they made another game that they got that they got closed. What was that other thing they tried to make that it was, was a like free to play, play, play game? game? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, listen, listen. If it were if it were twenty twenty, they would have made Sleeping Dogs. Everybody would have been happy that Microsoft would have bought them, uh, and they'd be making Sleeping Dogs too in house. Uh, so don't give me that. What's that else? What else? I yeah, it's well, it's it's. it's uh, listen, that sounds like a. It also sounds like a big game. So we'll see what yeah. what happens there. I I'm just I'm me personally. I'm very curious to see like what actual tangible differences these creative changes end up resulting in because that game is so far along and I know that it's you know it's been delayed but like a lot of that work has to have been done at this point. Like I'm trying to figure out like That's... how much could they actually change I don't know. other than visual hmm. stuff. I, like that game is supposed to be out in two weeks so what's going on they're like, undoing well, it they have to bring in people yeah, to undo that it. work i don't know i get it i i i yeah i look i i you think you know something about game development <laughs> and then and then something else like this happens and you're just like huh i had it's no all idea. a nightmare well so, no well idea. uh can we jump right into speaking of games that have gone gold uh, yeah, and, and games and, that are not coming out despite and, having gone gold. And speaking of thing of gone gold, and not having any meaning anymore. Um, nope. Tell me, tell me what's going on with Cy- so Let's start with the cyberpunk delay. Yeah, so there's a lot going on with cyberpunk. We'll start at, the starting point here. Will be the delay. So, despite uh, the cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account, as recently as the day before this announcement, going around telling people, nope, game's coming out in November. It's happening in November. Game's coming out in November. Cyberpunk is no longer coming out in November. It has been delayed. All versions have been delayed until December 10th. And so the one side of this is a lot of game reviewers that are now looking at the release calendar and breathing a sigh of relief being like, okay, I get a few weeks between my 80 hour video games that I have to engage with. It's possible um, that maybe Abby and I will yeah. have a next generation console by then. Mm-hmm. Distinctly possible. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Who can say the other side of this is what the fuck is going on with that game? Um, 
so one thing we do know, and, and I'm, I'm going to kind of roll this all up into one little news blast here. Uh, there has been talk over the last several weeks about crunch on that game. Mm. Um, earlier this year, the, the co-CEOs of the company, I believe, got out there and said that, like, you know, we're really looking to not do crunch on this one. We're going to try and minimize it as much as possible. Um, and then by all accounts, they did not do that. Um, once the game started getting delayed, pushed further and further into the release calendar, reporting started coming out, a lot of from Jason Schreier over at Business Insider, um, but also I think there have been other reporting as well that, like, you know, developers are working six-day weeks on this game, or and there's a lot of, you know, like, overtime hours being put in, you know, crunch, like they are crunching on it. And, you know, kind of going back on what they'd said they were not going to do. And I don't think anyone would really be calling as much attention to this. I mean, crunch is bad. We all know this. And I think it's it's worth calling out whenever it, it comes to light. But I don't think it would have been as big of a deal had they not gone out of their way to say that they weren't going to do it. And now we're in the situation where, again, and this is continuing on after the um, the the delay was announced, uh, there was uh, some kind of, you know, I don't know if it was an interview or a Q&A somewhere, one of the co-CEOs literally just said, yes, we have some people working, extra hours, Q&A, engineers, programmers, but it's not that heavy. It will be extended a bit, but we have feedback from the team. They're happy about the extra three weeks. We don't see any threats regarding crunch. <laughs> so the, the back the backstory of this, though, is that almost none of the development studio apparently knew this delay was happening until it was announced. That's bizarre. And the re and the reasoning they're saying is because it had to do with uh, the the Polish stock market. They could not risk people like that information getting out there ahead of time, possibly for insider trading stuff. I'm not sure. But whatever the case, people didn't know it was happening until it was happening. And then according to Jason Schreier today, he posted what he said was an email that was sent around to inside the company by the same co-CEO where he has to apologize for referring to Crunch that way. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to apologize to everyone for what I said during Tuesday's investor conference call. I had not wanted to comment on Crunch, yet I still did, <laughs> and I did it in a demeaning and harmful way. And it kind of goes on to just apologize more. And it's just like, like what is... I shot myself in the foot again, <laughs> my bad. Like, I am... It's one thing if you just if you're delaying a game over and over again. I get it. Shit happens during development, but there's just so much going on in the background of the development of this game and it just seems like there is a mess incoming of some kind. And I don't know what degree of mess that is because obviously I haven't put hands on that game. I don't know what it's what the end product is going to be like, but it's just there's a lot of shit swirling around this thing. Yeah, and it's um yeah. I, I I not even to mention the um uh the the whole i think did you mention where they put out a post that in the whole thing of like we've gone gold get ready for cyberpunk and then yes have to, oh, yes yeah. and then and then kind of had to be like hey we, we, we okay we said we went gold but that doesn't mean work has stopped on the game uh and for those right. that don't know or maybe i'm this term is just meaningless now it used to be you make your gold master and that's what you sent off the, the code is burned onto a disc and you send that off for reproduction and that's the game you got uh and right. nowadays i guess that's kind of meaningless you know, right. the, the term had started to be used to be like, we've locked code in, but I guess, you know, what does that mean anymore, right? But here's your day zero patch. Yeah, also, but here's your day you know, zero like patch. That, once patches on console games started happening, yeah. going gold started to mean a lot less, but it did mean yeah. something. It meant <laughs> that your your content is all on the disc. The, the core of the game is there, but, you know, obviously a lot can change between when that disc goes out, to, you know, to distributors and when patches go live like no man's sky which we'll talk about it here in a second is one of the ultimate examples of that the game they put on that disc is not not light years but a big difference from what that game was when they patched it so much so that while i was reviewing it <laughs> i essentially had to start over and realized oh they did a lot they so, did a lot here so do you think there will be do you think they're manufacturing copies of cyberpunk that will then be put in with a big giant day one patch? Or do you think they have just stopped or never got to the manufacturing that part anyway? Well, that happens anyway, but, uh, for, but not, I, well, listen, I don't know every game, but like maybe not with this big of a brouhaha uh, about it. No? I'm, yeah. I, I mean, bet what's on that disc is what they said went gold. Yeah, you do. Like, you think that was the, that was yeah. the gold master and they printed this or yes. started. Okay. Yeah. I could, I could buy yeah. that. I, but, but that's the, like i don't know but is that I'm yeah sure. you're right is I'm that sure abnormal now no do you, when was the last time you put a game in and it didn't have to patch never a when was the last yeah. time i put a game in b <laughs> yeah. uh right. yeah like I, I i would really be hard-pressed to hear about a game that did not need something 
within the first right. week. Uh, so yeah, that's um, that's a heck of a story uh, uh, with everything rolled up into it, and, and it's also a shame yeah. because I I CD Projekt Red, um, s- they make the Witcher games. I think they they make good they make great games. It's a I, I you never want to hear uh, trouble in a studio that you're like really looking forward to their projects. And this isn't the first time they've had other stuff bubble up, but this seems like right. kind of kind of messier than normal for, for them. It's com- it's coming to a head and it sounds yeah. like a lot of this is just owed to the fact that, you know, I mean at least from the reporting that's out there like, you know, people who have worked on that game or are still working on the game say that a lot of their process was just they were just trying shit for a long time and then at some point they realized, oh, we have to actually make the game now, which is a thing you hear all the time in AAA development of like, yeah. hey, we're fucking around, we're fucking around until we can't fuck around anymore and then yeah. you have to make a game. And you know, I just like, look, we'll see where this goes. We'll see what happens. I hope, I still hope the game is good, but like, it just sounds like the development of that thing has been a mess. Yeah. Well, well, uh, well it's, it's it, taken on a much different story for sure. Yeah. Even December, uh, even December 10th is not that far away. Uh, no. In terms of yeah, month I and mean, change. Yeah. I, so, so just a quick, quick survey around the room. Does this, yeah. this game come out in 20? Oh boy, I think that probably has to. I bet hmm, there's a I made this a bet one already. I made a bet with someone already back when they delayed it to November, mm-hmm. and the bet was that does it come out in twenty? And I said yes. I feel like yeah, they can't delay it again. And if they were, I don't know, they would already delay it to twenty twenty one. You know Here's what I mean? The thing. What you just said, Abby, is what I said the last time they delayed. That's true. Yeah, but but it's different when it's like you're delaying it like two weeks or whatever versus like. This delay is so small that it's just like. Like why? Yeah. I. What What is this going to change? It's hard to say without knowing internally what the the situation is. Like, did they have trouble optimizing it for final hardware on on the consoles? Are they having trouble with the upgrade patch on those things? Are they? You know, did they run it on a, a 3080 and it set somebody's house on fire? Like, you know. Also, like, it's a pandemic. Their staff, I'm sure, is all over the place. I'm sure that made the production of everything much different. Yeah. And so, does it have so, to get out a door for a quarterly financials, right? Does it have to be out right. by Jan- uh, before which, January? Which is maybe why that uh, that first excuse was maybe a bit more believable given the, what is it? How many weeks are they doing it? Like, like three yeah. three all right so the first time they delayed it we'll call it the last time they delayed it um was september to november right that's right. two months now it's well, wasn't three, originally supposed to come out early this year april i think right yeah so they, they oh, delayed geez, it from, what? They, from april so to september four, so four months two months there's a pattern here <laughs> mm-hmm. three weeks the next delay will just be three like days. four hours it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Seven days, three and a half days. Yeah, like we'll get there. <laughs> wow. April. Does that take into account for daylight savings time? Oh, I gotta do the math. Uh game development never stops. Uh what is going on with uh, Oculus and Facebook? Well, as you know, Oculus is owned by Facebook. Oh. Yeah. Um and while I am a big fan of the uh, delete your Facebook account uh, mentality, despite the fact that I have not actually deleted my <laughs> Facebook account, I just never use it. Um if you own an Oculus device and you are buying games in that Oculus marketplace, you can't delete your Facebook account now because so recent, I think it was in August, uh, Facebook announced that they will be, they basically, once you sign on and start buying games in the, uh, the, the, the Oculus marketplace, you have to have a Facebook account and it has to tie into your overall purchase account. Um, I think, well, so- is that going to roll over? Cause when I signed up, I didn't need one. Uh, I, I think up, like, I, I think tweet, they're setting yeah. it up so that everyone has to eventually, well, eventually. If, if they don't already. Yeah. Um, so at this point, basically what they are saying is that if you deactivate or delete your Facebook account, um, the purchases that you have made, the games that you supposedly have the rights to will go away. Oh, wow. Um, and the example they are using is like with your Apple ID. Like if your Apple ID disappears, then you don't have the purchase rights for that stuff you bought on the Apple marketplace anymore. Right. Um, obviously an Apple ID is slightly less fraught than Facebook in general these days. Um, but I, like, I see what they're saying here, but at the same time, that sucks. Like that just sucks. Yeah. I stinks, but I also think like I had to sign up for an Oculus account anyway. Like what's the difference, I guess is my thoughts. Like, I mean, Facebook is Facebook, but mm-hmm. like, I feel like it's so easy to just make a dummy Facebook account that is just my login for 
the Oculus. You totally could. Yeah, it's it's not that, that there's no way around this. It's just that if you decided to tie it to your existing Facebook account and then you delete that account, you're kind of out that stuff. And so I guess there is a 30-day period where you will be able to undo that if you want. So you won't just lose it instantly. I but see. that also still involves reactivating your Facebook account if you want to do that. Yeah, I, th- I think the I think the issue for me there would be Facebook facebook is so much more than the oculus stuff so you know if you're right. if you're if you're deleting it because of all the other 99 percent of the other stuff that you don't like and the one percent of the face or the oculus stuff that you want uh maybe there could be an option to spin that into a stub account that is an oculus account and get rid of all the other data hooks that are yeah, in there I mean, or something fair you know? enough. um yeah dude, there's a I mean, not to say that Apple logins don't collect tons of data. Also, like I, I don't even know if that's fair to say that Apple. Of course they do. Yeah, all these things they, they are basic. Do, but the but the impression is that they don't use it against you in the way Facebook. Does. <laughs> media. Yeah, yeah, they've yeah, done they've done a better like PR job. <laughs> yeah, media Here's thing the thing. that if, takes your information is probably not great. If, and people are also in chat being like, "Well, dummy accounts will get you banned," but I think the difference is like, I could make an account with my Oculus right now with the Facebook account. That would just like automatically fill in all the shit. And I don't think it's a dummy count in the same way that like somebody catfishing is. I think this is a dummy count yeah. in the same way. I'm logging on with my Oculus. It is a Facebook account that just I'm not going to put any pictures in. I don't think that would get me banned. I, but I also I, think like I get it. It stinks. But I don't think I think for me, like my maybe more nuanced take not to like defend Facebook or anything is like, yeah, I think if you log into Apple, they're like watching your shit. If you log into any of the shit. They like they got the goods on you. Just now, I logged into Instagram, which uh, is also owned by Facebook. Yeah. Um, and they were giving me Peloton ads, which I had never gotten before, and that's, we were just talking about Peloton. Uh, that's so, so creepy. I think like just, this don't, shit's all don't, interconnected. Don't, like it's all bad. Why? Like I don't know. It's all people, bad. I just think. I, I I don't look. I I agree with you. That is gonna happen. I just don't. I don't like pushing the notion of like your phone waiting for you to say a product and then it is serving you an ad that is very unlikely how they do that so did you look I up any said, peloton stuff abby did you did you search yeah, i googled it oh there okay, you go there you go oh. it doesn't have instagram logged uh, uh, in anywhere no they got it they got it's a separate the computer cookies. and then the i looked at my phone you. i mean we had someone do this like three year like long report or was maybe two years where he like talk to literally everyone he could possibly talk to and his takeaway was like no this is not what they're doing i anyway i, I look i don't i don't know uh yeah I, I think i think the stuff with facebook is just facebook's in a very particular position right now especially during the election of of being under sure. a lot of scrutiny for the way they are handling information management and uh, rightfully and so rightful, yeah rightfully so yeah. so, so no, i think yeah i think i think that part is um you know, there's definitely a part of people wanting to distance themselves from Facebook. So having the Oculus stuff, having your game side tied to that is, is a bit of a bummer if you can't tease that it, out or transfer it out or something. It seems to me like that it's just inexcusable that you cannot get around that. I just yeah. I just think that is so lame. And they want you to have a Facebook account. Yeah, they really want you to. I mean, I some I mean, I got rid of mine a, a couple of years ago. I I do have an Instagram account, but um man i i just like that that if that's going to prevent me from using this thing i mean i don't know that is just wild um okay let's uh we'll <laughs> switch gears here for a second and tell me about the dutch gaming authority all right oh yeah remember loot boxes no remember the whole man thing so with loot that's boxes? that's so when 2019 the last time they had like a loot box yesterday uh, today I, the, yeah the, uh the what is it beaker Overwatch? beaker breakers <laughs> yeah so so this is we're talking about ea here um ea so there was a, a court ruling in the netherlands uh that upheld an earlier ruling by a, by a lower court uh that sided with uh the com- the country's gambling authority uh <laughs> on loot boxes and essentially has decided that they have one week to remove loot boxes <laughs> from fifa or they will face up to 5.85 million dollars in fines what is that in uh, uh what is that in guilders guilders is that what they gil- kroner no no it's euros now oh sorry uh, most, most everything's euros uh okay. but I, i'm trying to yeah i think it might have been something like what you just said back <laughs> in the day. okay um 
But so, like, a bunch of games kind of got roped up into this uh, with European regulations around gambling and loot boxes a couple of years ago. Uh, some of the other ones included Dota 2, uh, Battlegrounds, Rocket League, etc. And all of those games have essentially removed their loot box mechanics, uh, at least in the regions where that is a problem. Um, but EA has not. And the big reason for that, of course, is that they make just an absolutely ghastly amount of money, especially in Europe, from FIFA Ultimate Team card packs and so the hilarious thing about mm -hmm. this story is that uh even if they were to incur the maximum fine uh in the netherlands here of 5.85 of million dollars that is a paltry sum compared to the amounts that they are making by just leaving that shit in there mm -hmm. and essentially we are looking at one of the great uh, injustices of of the the modern legal system, which is essentially that it's just it's not illegal if you can just pay for it, right? You know, um, like it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter to you at your bottom line that much. That's right. Just pay the fucking fines, you yeah. know, and it, you can just mm -hmm. keep like flouting the law until they come up with a stiffer penalty. It's like when those delivery like deliveries in Manhattan, uh, where you just get the fine, like the delivery trucks just take the fine because what are you gonna do? Not deliver the products in double park. So it's it's, it's just, just the cost yeah. of doing just, business. Just the cost yeah. of doing business. So yeah, uh, except in this part, uh it's probably at the expense of uh of people getting uh you know, people who are most vulnerable getting built out of a lot of money in games, uh, because yep. they have what well, I, I firmly believe at some point we'll be looked at as an abuse of uh, of people who have addictions to uh, this type of dumping money. And sure, you yeah. can responsibly dump money into a game, get your loot boxes, and have fun. But I think there is a, yeah. a lot of it's, science it's, that will say that people sometimes it's, the mis it's more the mislabeling of it, right? Like that's what it really I think a big part it's, of it's the, the denial is. that it is in any yes. way a gambling mechanic. Exactly. It's trying to yeah. explain that away. And and I, I think I think the part where th companies have hired teams of psychologists to know exactly how to manipulate the human psyche into putting mm -hmm. this money in versus you is the part where I think it would not, not uh, recognizing that is like you have a team of people trying to engineer this stuff in the way that makes it the most slip a wedge into your brain to get you on the hook and they have all your data and they know when Abby wants to buy the bone banana uh versus uh uh instagram i want to buy it all the time <laughs> yeah he wants to buy it all the time she knows exactly when to hit that that, that it's like an unfair <laughs> the deck stacked against you um ooh. um so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see how the the um, ea, EA is appealing this decision so right now they don't actually have to flout the law just yet because they are still going through the appeals process but i i have to imagine at some point they're just going to look at the bottom line there and just be like I, we can afford five million dollars. That's fine. You know, like we'll just take it. We'll just take it out of NHL's budget. It's fine. Whatever. Right. What? A, somebody just paid uh, uh, five hundred one million dollars for this. Uh, this. Uh, yep. This, this uh, crispy pickle. What are the Captain Pickle? Uh, uh, pickle Rick. Uh, uh, FIFA. Oh Coffee. God. Yeah. Let's get on to another piece of news here. Um, okay. Well, speaking of sports, what about sports? Uh, so for the upcoming PS5 and Series X launches of NBA 2K21, mm -hmm. there's going to be an addition beyond just uh, much better graphics uh, and you know some some other bells much and whistles better. around the uh, mm -hmm. the horsepower. <laughs> um, so they are adding a career mode for the WNBA section of the game, which uh, the current version of 2K21 does not have. Um, now. They have not really elaborated what, like, how much of a story mm. there is going to be there. There is a career. You'll be able to play as a player through a full career uh, in the WNBA. But as far as, like, it, are they going to do, like, the actual story mode around it? It kind of seems like maybe not. Do, um, do we have at least information whether you begin that career in college or high school? Or is it, you know, if it's, like, from a draft or... I think it's just you get drafted into okay. the WNBA and you kind of start from there. Um, you know, and that doesn't not to say that they won't flesh this out, you know, in future iterations. This is their first time doing anything like that. Up to this point, it had basically been like you could play a season as the WNBA, right. uh, you know, playoffs, what have you, but like you couldn't really do a career mode. And, you know, the my player mode in 2K21 is like one of the draws of that game. It's the thing that people tend to gravitate towards. So it's it's good that they're establishing this. I'm wondering, A, is this mode going to come to the previous gen versions at all? And like just kind of how substantial it's actually going to be. Those those are my questions at the moment. But it will be there when the game launches uh on, on November tenth. 
Okay. Um, man, we got we got stuff. How about No Man's Sky? We just talked a little There's bit about that. that. Yeah, this is a brief one, but um, so No Man's Sky, like a lot of other games, is getting a current. Uh, I guess I'm just start calling it current gen <laughs> upgrade because oh, we're wow. so close to it. Jeez, um, make me feel worse. But, yeah. Great. So they're they're adding a bunch yeah, of stuff. We're living in, this... in the past, Vinny. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um. So they're adding a bunch of stuff with this this new update. Uh, 4K resolution, 60 frames a second, all that fun stuff. Um, the update is also bringing with it a 32 player multiplayer mode, um, which I think it means you can all kind of generally be in the same general space. You can ma- build much bigger bases. Uh, there's a lot of off world like colonization stuff that you can do. Um, this I'm pretty far away from the last time I played No Man's <laughs> Sky yeah. and watching this trailer. I was just kind of going bug eyed a few times. being like, oh, oh, we can do that. I remember they did the big horror update not recently where they added a bunch of like ghost ships um and this some of the stuff that like the running through like what looks like a giant like you know colony based stuff just looked far beyond anything that i had ever experienced in this game and it's really impressive also realizing maybe it's not the actual way i want to play no man's sky when i inevitably do boot it back up on one of these consoles well yeah it is wild it is i from that game at launch it it is basically an mmo that's you know yeah it is it is essentially that path of like oh this is unrecognizable to me at this point like i <laughs> totally know. uh are they ever allowed to make a sequel or does it just have to be this game forever because these have all been free updates for the most part or have any been paid they, i think they i think they've all been free yeah wow that's uh and i think that's great like, like i i love the direction they have taken that game in like me personally when i play it when i have played it i've always played it like a nomad i just go from system to mm. system engage in a little dark commerce here and there you know do the scan the planets look for some new guys to scan and then you know i I go about my merry way maybe i come back maybe i don't that's how i like to play but i love that all this other stuff is in there for the people who want it who want these like much bigger you know elaborate bases and freighters and all that shit like it seems like they've really kind of gotten that game to an impressive place it just is so every time they like update it i'm always like maybe this is when i'll get back in but then i log (laughs) in and i'm like oh there's a lot here i don't know what i'm doing (laughs) like i guess i gotta start over every time i have started playing it with a new update i have started over i have never gone back to an existing character because it's just i want to i mean you know what let's go fresh it's also like it's like five years between every playthrough so it's like well might as well uh i it's just it, when did that game come out is, is it six years old 2015 2015 wow i just how I, is that it's impressive it's impressive i wonder what their sell through at this point of no man's sky is is somebody telling is, is it sean over there is uh somebody saying listen we gotta make another game <laughs> at some point we gotta make a different we gotta <laughs> we gotta charge this or we gotta do that you we we haven't sold more than five copies in like two years man no it's gotta get it perfect you know like my vision like we okay but uh i know we sold a lot at the beginning but like we do have to pay people uh uh, we're gonna run out like what is going on there they must have sold a ton out of the gate well they also have another game like there was another game they were working on that i I can't remember it actually came out yet or not i'm not sure that it has but it's like a platformer like it's not a not a big space thing or anything like that like they had a whole other small group of, of of devs working on this other project so joe danger three that's must be what you're thinking of now nah, that's the dream man <laughs> <laughs> that's what no man's sky is gonna like wrap around back around to is this basically they're gonna keep going so far that the the whole game is just a, like a prequel to joe danger uh uh the uh, three it's uh I, at least i hope so man um good for them i feel like it's it's somebody is going to do Danny O'Dwyer is going to do a massive documentary on this that is going to uh, chronicle uh, from uh, uh, announcement at Sony uh, on a Sony stage to when we're all <laughs> living inside of No Man's Sky and saying how did how did we get here? All right, um, is there more news? A couple more. Okay, there's a couple of small yeah, things going. here. Um, so I don't know if anyone remembers this, but uh, I think it might have been earlier this year cloud gaming did actually launch on the nintendo switch um you may not remember because it only made its debut in japan so far okay. uh so fantasy star online 2 assassin's creed odyssey and resident evil 7 were playable on the switch but they were only available as cloud streaming games well there are going to be a couple more games added to that service and i believe they are in fact coming over to the west as well um control 
is apparently now available on Switch as a cloud version. And then I guess when Hitman 3 comes out, it will also be on the Switch as a cloud streaming game. Hmm. 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 Is what I have to say about that. Yeah. A lot hmm. of hmms there. Hmm. All right. A lot of hmms. So okay. I haven't seen the cl- I have not seen the cloud stuff on on the Switch. I don't know how well it works. I haven't messed with it, but I mean, those seem like games you could probably play in a good cloud streaming environment and not have it suck. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you want to play? I'm saying if it's if mm-hmm. it's a good cloud streaming environment. I don't know if it is or not. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> what? What, I Jeff? Mean, I don't, I don't know. I just instantly think about poor range on a mario car uh, oh like, you've been hurt before. he's been hurt before he's been hurt before uh alex let's take it to this last bit of news here yeah one last little nintendo hit and this one's just for you Vinny. oh thank you it's just for you okay it's all for you Vinny. okay um it's always been for you so Vinny. yeah i just turned uh, my xbox here's... okay sorry go oh, ahead you shouldn't do that <laughs> um so super mario 3d all-stars we all are lukewarm on it um you know galaxy's still a great game but it wasn't the best collection and well, one i never complaint, played it so one one complaint some people had was that there was no option to change the camera stick thing at all to inverted yeah. or you know different from what what was uh in there by default mm-hmm. all three games are going to be getting i i think i don't know i, I think it looks like november 16th is when this update is coming there will be the option to have an inverted camera so if you want to great you want to have those controls Vinny. finally for you it's all for you only the you. uh unfortunate news in the monkey paw wish is that it only inverts the horizontal control uh no, i'm just kidding I, I don't know anything about that okay um <laughs> you believe it for a second be uh, insane uh yeah that would be good put it back to what it was in uh in the squirty time mario uh we're gonna move on to uh emails now let's take a very short break and we will be right back with a bit of the emails as soon as i get this uh music here get that music here here we go uh stay tuned don't go anywhere this will be a short one And we are back. My monitor is doing something funny. What is going on here? I feel like your whole setup's been a little funny today. It you keep had, dropping out. It's been a little going, uh, it's been Your Xbox good. turned on. Uh, yeah, well, that that's just, that's fun. Ghosts. Um, Do you yeah. think your son is unplugging stuff behind there until you give him an allowance? I hope so. That would be nice. Just get to work, you know? Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to do uh, some emails here. If you've got an email, send them into beastcast.giantbomb.com. Beastcast.giantbomb.com. Hope that email travels with us. Any, Abby Russell. Uh, <laughs> uh, these guys get it. Uh, Abby Russell. <laughs> what do we got for emails this week? Okay. We got this first one from Lyman. Alex, read it. All right, Lyman says, with Halloween coming up, I've been looking for a super scary book to read. Emphasis added by me. Um, I picked up Pet Cemetery from my local bookstore, but do you guys have any other suggestions just for reference? I've also been looking for scary movies to watch. I did not find Hereditary or Midsummer <laughs> scary at all, but I liked The Witch. What? What's that? The, it's witch. the witch. It's the oh. witch, but it's just it's like weird. I feel like the typography of the poster is with V's, but I think uh, it's right. like it's the like, actual title is still the witch. Right? It's like a church. I know. Things. I just like yeah, the way I Dan loves to say chip birches. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. My what? recommendation yeah. for this is mm-hmm. Joe Hill's Heart Shaped Box. I love Joe Hill. I think a lot of his stuff is really good, and not a, in many ways in the the way horror movies or books aren't always scary. They're like, oh, it's about humanity. I think this book is genuinely very scary. Heart-shaped box by Joe Hill. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's scary, but I do really like it. I think it's like haunting in a lot of ways is the long walk by Stephen King, also known as Richard Bachwin. I think it's just a good book in general. Um, big fan. I read it like once a year and I love it. So are we now we're now we're, this is like scary, spooky, scary, right? Ideally. He wants a super scary book to read. Cause I think, that uh, means to you. 
I think The Road is a very disturbing and scary book. Like, uh, I it is a book I had a tough time making it through because maybe it's, it's depressing. <laughs> same as scary. Is this really the year you want to recommend <laughs> someone read The Road, man? Yeah. No. Is this the year for that? <laughs> yeah. Pro- pro- yeah. Probably not. Okay, let's go back and uh, you know, you know, it's. Uh, 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 so we've got Pet Cemetery. I thought Cujo, the book, is kind of scary. It's kind of, oh, really? it's, it's kind of gross and kind of scary. Um, Interesting. Uh, I think the, the shining. Yeah. Is the book Sphere is kind of the, not the movie, but the book the Sphere. Michael Sphere. Craig, no, wait, not the yeah. movie. The book is actually the book has it's, some some good tension to yeah, it. Yeah, that's some, pretty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think um, I think that first Jurassic Park is not necessarily like Jurassic Park is so overdone, but it's at the time I mean the book the book yeah uh, the book has moments where you're like yeah. oh, God. I don't read a lot of horror though, so I, I'm I'm a bad person to ask about this. I'm, I read a lot yeah. of horror. I, I love horror and I love reading horror when I do. I'm just, I rarely sit down to read books because I'm a big dumb dumb. But um, <laughs> when I do read them, I do enjoy them. The Shining is always a classic. I'm sure most people have read it by now, but you know, I, if you've never, if you've only ever seen the movie or the various other adaptations, uh, the book is still the OG and I think still fucking fantastic. Um, there was a short story collection I read a couple of years ago. I think I've recommended it on here before, but I will do it as well uh the it's called behold the void mm. it is by an author named philip fricasi it is a short story collection and it is uh 90 percent excellence and the other 10 percent is still pretty good so i i recommend that one a lot backlog you like scary books um no but i'm trying to think about a scary uh comic book that oh. i've read and uh, nothing's really coming to mind spawn eat Junji Ito stuff is always real good if you're into that yeah. that kind of stuff. I don't think that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you have a high tolerance for stuff, very little is probably going to be like genuinely scary. <laughs> mm-hmm, but I think right. like haunting or like really well done. And I think yeah, the Junji Ito stuff is is that. Um, I love the one he has about all the spirals. Yes, the spirals one is really good. I love the yeah, one I also read about Tammy, but I like the spirals one better. I, um, What's the one with the a... the holes in the wall? Is that that's uh, the that's like a like a short 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 thing? thing. That's really one of the ones though. I haven't read. Okay, sorry, back yeah. Um There is uh, one thing that came to mind that really I remember. I was reading it in bed, and uh, I usually read comic books in, with the intent of falling asleep, mm-hmm. and this just spooked me in a way that I could not fall asleep. Uh, it was. It's called Ice Cream Man. Is the name of the comic? Yeah. And it I is not that Abby. Oh. It is deranged shit. <laughs> uh, pretty much. But it sounds delicious. Is it based on the Van Halen song of the same name? In fact, it is. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, looking at a horror comedy from 1995, and this poster is very good. I I think reading that. Um, you know, someone in the chat room just said lock and key. I don't know, always associate oh. lock and key with like being super scary. It is definitely like, you know, creepy adjacent, but I don't know if it's like. It's also by Joe Hill, I believe. Um, but yeah, check out Ice Cream Man. Check out, I think Scott Snyder did a, vo- a volume of something called Witches, but it was spelled like W-Y. <laughs> um, and yeah, that, that was, yeah. yeah. And that was. I think I remember reading that and, and feeling it being a little spooky. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's, I, I, I do think I do find comic books to be scarier perhaps than not like, uh, you know, story. You like or having maybe, a visual element. Yeah, sure. When you have like the, the horrid <laughs> gross you know, visuals there. Uh, it, yeah. it, um, if you're looking for, it's not scary, but it's a kind of fun creature of the week ish week ish stuff. That uh, Immortal Hulk series is uh, is very good. For the it's it's kind of it's it's more uh, creature feature style stuff. Uh, it's very campy and pulpy. It's good though. It's uh, I need to. I don't think I'm caught up. I don't. I feel like they haven't put out issues in a while. Comic books kind of what happened? I mean, COVID happened. But I feel like uh, a lot of things. Yeah. I also think I got busy and just stopped reading them as much. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I think comic book stores. Thing. Uh, I mean, you know, they're. I don't know if they ever really. I know. Yeah. Were on their way back, but uh, I think that has been a, a you know a casualty 
just like a lot of things but uh stuff seems to be coming out is it okay because yeah. it was definitely it felt spotty for a while there but um not the, i felt I, mean, re- I feel really bad i don't have a great way to get comics uh i mean dig- aside from digitally physical books um because mm-hmm. i used to walk by uh in midtown manhattan uh, the comic place there was a uh, midtown comics and just walk in there and go pick up like sonic book or whatever for my yeah, son i remember we could do that uh, i know it's just wild. Like, i'm on my way to somewhere else i'm <laughs> yeah. gonna pass by the store but then ordering a comic online if you're gonna order a single issue of a physical comic you're gonna pay probably as much in shipping as the the comic and unless yeah. you're you know getting like three uh, or four it's kind well, of you gotta get into a bunch i know I, I, don't, I, know. I don't know i don't know about what i don't know what he's saying but i can just hear it in the back of my head somewhere casey malone is screaming at this podcast right now and i don't know what i, <laughs> I don't know what, what to communicate but i feel like there's something in his head right now that he wants to scream he's, at say, he's, he's saying he's saying uh, he's saying uh, he's gonna say go he's a call aaron <laughs> he's, yeah. he's what he's saying. <laughs> um I also feel like I really when I was tingling. when I was reading a bunch of comics, I feel like I would read like the single issues digitally and then buy the trades. I think that's how I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's a fun way to go. I I, I think um for me, I think I wanted my 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 son really enjoyed the physical books and then um you know because you could just give him the iPad and you could just have them all digitally anyway. But I, I think there's oh, something yeah. to having like a, a collection you own as a kid, right? Like you're like, yeah, oh, this is these are my comics, and um and then I say. This one's not in a bag, Max. <laughs> if you don't want to take care I of your think, stuff, I won't buy you stuff. Uh, I yeah, I I'm hearing the collector and you come out again. Yes. And I'm like, oh, right, this makes more <laughs> sense because I'm like thinking about like the yeah. times when I was like, I'm gonna collect this whole mm-hmm. series. <laughs> like I started collecting sex criminals, which like just finished, and I think I stopped around like issue 15 or something. <laughs> um, but now I look at them. And I'm, they sit in the milk crate, and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with all these? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Do so, I, I'm not going to read them again. They're in plastic. It's too much work to take them in and out. I uh, I called my comic book collection way down to – I have one one box. That's it that I've carried with me for, like, my adult life from collecting some comics in the 90s. And there was a lot of crap in the 90s that just didn't make the cut. Uh, but I, I kept most of my stuff. Uh, which is funny because somebody just posted that um, it was a it was a funny drawing uh, that comic book cover uh, the Days of Future Past cover with uh, Wolverine in front of the poster uh, with all the mutants that are have been wiped out. Speaking you guys know Casey that cover? Malone, mm-hmm. I didn't know the history of that cover. He told me that like that they were all all the the original one was all the people on the wall were like dead. <laughs> dead. Like, yeah, yeah, they're dead. Like. <laughs> What? It's, a, it's a little dark if you take it that way uh but i have that i had i bought that as a kid not as a kid as a young adult i have that uh in my collection that that uh, i bought it for 20 it was the most expensive wow. comic i bought because i thought that cover was so cool it was 20 bucks i bought it 20 uh, bucks yeah damn yeah i know what money bags over here i don't know i don't uh Check. i think i did what is it called i'll look it up for you uh i think it's Future the Pass? i think it's the first issue of days of Future Pass. i don't i don't know if it's the first one in that arc um that was funny i pulled that out then it's that's buried between like 105 issues of like number ones from all the the crap that was coming out in the 90s wildcats and you know this semi embossed blood cover and uh don't check out forget don't forget this oh man foil yeah, image, image comics did, did a oh, lot they there. pumped did out not. stuff yeah yeah they did uh one more email abby um sure one more email Vinny, you should read this one from Ben. Also, it looks like this comic is worth twenty eight dollars and sixty nine cents. Hey, wow! Nice. Wait, really? Is it really? That's it. Mine's in uh, not mint condition. Yep. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, well then maybe you're closer more. to down to like twelve dollars and ninety two. Come on, no way for that thing. That thing's a classic. Who doesn't love that? I should have sold it when Days of Future Past came out. Um, this one from Ben. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm a Ben. I'm in the market for a good streaming camera. I'm considering a DSLR. I've noticed the great quality of Vinny's camera. That's emphasis added by me. Great quality of Vinny's camera on streams. Thank you, Ben. Uh, I have a few questions. What is Vinny's camera? Uh, that is weird because he spells my name with a Y in the first part and then with an I E in the second part. Uh, <laughs> but I'll assume he's still talking about me, Ben. Uh, and, all his bases. Yeah, it's, and, also, it's also it's a nickname. He can be he fast can, and loose mm, with it. Uh, do you have any suggestions or settings that you found make it look so good? 
And uh, part two, for all the beasters, what has been your biggest technical hurdle for streaming from home since the pandemic began? Well, good, I can't think of anything. Good question. No <laughs> problems for Bacalar. Problem for you. Uh, this is uh, a mirrorless uh, 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 digital camera here. It's the Canon uh, EOS 200, I think. It doesn't say the model number on it, but uh, work paid for this. So thank you, work. Uh, and that is what we're using. I think it is. Uh, it was recommended by Jason A. Striker as a camera that would not turn off. This is what you have to watch. Would not turn off uh, while using video mode. So you have to be aware of that. Some of them have like 10 minute timers or so where they will shut down. So this one does not. Uh, and I use that into a cam link um, into my computer HDMI in for that. And so that's just what I'm using. A couple of other people here have it. Abby, I don't know. Do you have the same one? I do, but okay. I have, I think, a different lighting setup, and I use it for this chair over here. Okay. So it's like, it's not as like up in my face. I find, I don't like how um, much detail there is. I don't like it's, how dark it is. Oh, I yeah. feel like it makes my face look shadowed. I want to look beautifully washed out mm -hmm. like a beautiful porcelain doll. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and this uh, camera has got a little too much detail for that to happen. <laughs> all right. Uh, a lighting is a big deal. Uh, a lighting yeah. uh, is, is a huge, huge deal. Um, and so I have two little led panels here and then i've got a light behind me which unfortunately sometimes you can see when i move out of the way uh and then add some throws on the on the shelf there and the biggest hurdle i have found streaming from home oh boy oh boy let me where do i get started where do i get started it is uh it, okay the biggest hurdle from streaming from home is internet not everybody not having mm -hmm. yeah, a, yeah. a fantastic Good internet point. line is the biggest hurdle it's an internet i also feel like inconsistent sound like everybody's got like much different room noise, much different audio in the sense, sense of like, oh, there's horns honking and people mm. in the street. Do you, do, you, do you have any examples of that? Of, no, of any consistent never. audio that we could point to? Uh, Anyone no, I in can't particular? think of anything off the top of my head. Um, mm. I'm sure chat will find some <laughs> to put in the comments later. Um, yeah, I feel like those are the big ones. Also, I think just like having people see inside your house. <laughs> like well, that's, that was yeah. the thing I had to get over where I was like, I'm moving before I went into this office. Like I'm moving everything into a corner so you can't see <laughs> my shit. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think the big ask of like, Hey, um, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know. And I don't care what your home situation is like, but you have to have a camera on for hours a day when it's like, yeah. oh, okay. I mean, that, but I think the biggest one being the internet, because it was a hurdle we still can't overcome because you can't just, you can't pay your way out of it in a lot of places. Or if you, if you mm -hmm. do it, it's, it's not reasonable because you just, they just don't have the yeah. lines run to some areas. So you just can't. So Tell me about it. yeah. Well, so some people, some people, and it's so wildly inconsistent here where it's like some people have uh, fiber and gigabit up and down. And some people have a great download because that's the way they structure a lot of these plans and like five to 10 megabits up. And it's like, you know, that's not a lot of headroom when you're streaming a six to 20 megabit, stream so it's you know it's it's just not doesn't work well <laughs> in a lot of workflows and it's not even that doesn't even complicate the streaming it also complicates well if you record a thing are you gonna be able to get it to other people in a reasonable amount of time how long does it take for you to upload a thing can you share your can you share your screen with multiple people if you're trying to do a local thing so some that affects stuff that's not even streaming so um yeah. i think that i think that has been the hardest part because a lot of the other things we have been able to be like, okay, what do you, what gear do you need? How, like, even, yeah. even like room noise, right? Okay, we'll try and get you a better microphone. We'll gain it down. We'll gain it up. We'll do this. But that has been, that has been really difficult. And actually, whenever something, whenever something dictates the kind of content we can do, that's when it starts to really annoy me. Where it's like, oh, yeah. this person should be the right person to cover this game, but they can't because they won't be able to stream it or won't be able to do uh, uh, can't have three people come join and share their session because they're upload speed. And that's, that's a real problem. So that, that is my yeah. blanket answer. That's um, a... Yeah. Okay. Mark, yeah. Alex, anyone? Uh, well, I was going to say for, for me, it's been less technological hurdles in the sense that I've, I've got pretty consistent internet. I've had to upgrade things like routers and a few other things here and there. By and large, like, getting my stuff together has not been that difficult the real thing for me has just been learning this stuff like you know by and large a lot of the production 
when we were in the studio was left to people who understand production, unlike me, who is a chucklehead that comes in and just says sarcastic things into a microphone and then leaves. Um, so learning how to, you know, audio balance and make sure that like streaming, oh, yeah, all the different stream settings are working and just getting everything going for a, a good streaming setup has been a learning experience <laughs> for me. And you know, I, I feel like I've mostly gotten there, but you know, there's a reason why my stuff tends to look pretty simple. And it's because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just, I'm pressing buttons and guessing and hoping it all works. And mostly it does, which I'm grateful for. Yeah. that I mean, that is a blessing. I, there, the technology has really caught up to uh, uh, allow this, right? Most people yeah. can stream from home. So that is a, I mean, if this were 15 years ago, I mean, I don't know what we'd be doing. We'd be sending each other videos in the mail, zip disks, and you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to to post something. So, uh, I, I guess we wouldn't be doing live streams like this because it would be too expensive, uh, and you wouldn't be right. able to do it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think we're really fortunate to be able to do this. Uh, but also, when you don't build this from the ground up and don't build your life around doing this from the ground up, uh, and don't know if this is temporary or permanent, uh, you know that that can be that can be odd. Let's um let's wrap this I, thing I, up. I, oh, backlash still has a lot of problems. What's up? I just, I mean, I think the the mic stuff for me is very obvious. Um, what but, are you talking about? I know, but no, uh, I mean, what are you talking about? We can't hear you. On a, <laughs> on a more serious, uh, non-technical note, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. am starting to feel the sort of psychological effects of of everything and i think just now yeah i mean it's been going on for a while but like i am i'm just um a little you know shaken and i don't know i i think a lot of it is just not getting out a lot and like for mm -hmm. me you know going into the city every day and and getting out some of that energy be it walking yeah. through the city seeing people in person you know, it's been bubbling up inside for a very long time. And in the last couple of days or so, it's really kind of come out in some shitty ways. And I, it's just like, it's, it, you know, it sucks. It's definitely for me, the takeaway when this is all over is probably going to be that where it's yeah. like the, the emotional tax that we have paid uh for this is is something that i just really uh really want to get over real quick for sure it stinks for yeah. sure no I, question. I, I think as the weather has gotten lousier uh mm -hmm. and if there's like i think i think the like being like oh yeah we're just trapped inside now <laughs> like this is yeah this is oh, oh like you know but when the sun was out and there, even if it was super hot and it was a pain in the neck because it was a 90 degree humidity or 90 percent humidity but at least the sun was shining now it's like I'm in this basement and I've got these windows blacked out. And by the time I go upstairs, it is dark outside. So I don't see mm -hmm. the sun uh, at all, uh, uh, ever. Um, We're going to so, need yeah. to get you a vitamin D lamp or something. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's a, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah there you th go. That, that part is, uh, that part is intense. And you're, you're right. It started to get on me recently, too. Uh, I started watching mm -hmm. uh, last night, I was watching like GoPro camera of people just walking around new york city from like 2017 oh. or 18 where uh, it was like you know people biking around and stuff like that and i had looked at it because i was looking up those bicycle trainers things and like this guy is just kind of, and i was like oh man i just i'll just watch this look at look at these people walking in the middle of the street that's great i love when that happens uh, you know like you know it's it's weird and you know the people it's still out there people are still out there it just feels like i haven't been outside in the city forever and maybe that's a jersey thing too where it's just like i've still got to take the bus or the car to go over a bridge to get there but um it's weird let me back in the office open those, yeah, do open those doors um it's like a whole lifestyle change yeah, <sighs> yeah. I, hey again i'm very feel very fortunate we have the technology to be able to do this yeah. and to reach everybody out there so thank you everybody for listening uh but that is gonna do it for this week's show Thank you very much, Alex Navarro, Jeff Backler, Abby Russell. I'm going to hit the music here. We're running over time. Oh, yeah. That's a correction. Oh. <laughs> get, hey, get them all in right now. <laughs> you have until this song ends. Yeah. Anything with anything with Halo we got wrong? 
air it out right now. Anything with uh, cyberpunk? Just scream it right in the chat right now. We're doing this right. We're doing this one live. I see nothing. Anything? Well, no, they're correcting me about Facebook now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's right. Anything? Who's they're, the bigger monster, saying, Apple or Facebook? They're, what? they're saying uh, uh, pil- uh, uh, what was it? Rocket Dick Pilgrim was already copy <laughs> written by someone else. What's, years ago. what's the know. biggest uh what's the worst the horror book we all got it right fantastic uh folks that's gonna do it for this week's podcast um i'll hit the right music this time uh, i've thank- like never heard that song for so long <laughs> I, don't know what else happened. I can't believe you got an emo- that's great rocket dick pilgrim that's it it's the future is that oh that oh is oh my god look at it look at him so cute <laughs> Uh, you should go check out. We played some Jackbox Party Pack uh, 7, I believe. You should go check that out on the site. That was a lot of fun. You should go stay tuned Stay tuned for uh, for uh, Six Crazy Frights. If you haven't watched the rest of them, go catch up on the site now. Uh, that's going up when, Abby? It's uh, this weekend or next week? This weekend. This weekend. And go also, check out. I was like a little behind on the editing of this one. It should go up later today, I think. Okay. Go check out all that stuff out. Go check out the quick look for Little Hope. Go check out the quick look for... Uh, Amnesia, which will be out soon. NHL 21. Uh, Transformers, maybe next week. I haven't recorded that yet. I'm not sure we'll have time. Stay tuned. Uh, Tomorrow, if you're watching this live, you can go check out. uh, We're doing a play date. We're going to go back into the Deep Rocks. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm there or Rory's there, but we'll figure that out. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for listening. It's been the Giant Beast cast. Thanks again, Alex. Thanks, Abby. And thanks, Jeff Backlar. And thanks, everybody at home. We'll be back next week. Go vote!